So how's everybody's week? Busy, busy. Very, very good. Yeah. Today's Monday. You talk about last week? Yeah. <laughs> last week. <laughs> did you last close week. did you close that uh 40? No. No, it went on and it went all the way up to the last day. And the lender said he wanted to be first position. Oh, that and the guy happen. already, yeah, and the person already had per, first position because he bought the house at seven hundred thousand already. So he already yeah. had a first position lien. So this one um went back and said um for that amount of money I'm putting four hundred k I want to be first and they went back and forth and they said no. Yeah. I said, well, okay, we'll just keep looking. Yeah. That that often happens. Yeah. When you're getting be with that kind of money, so yeah, you had a you had a. Uh, well, I thought the acquisition was seven fifty. Yeah, he bought the house at seven fifty, but he needed four hundred and fifty to furnish it and put it on the market for short term rental. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The uh, the seven fifty, whatever the bigger number is, that's generally the one in first position. Yeah, and the lender knew that because that's how I sold it. And he just yeah. wasted my time for a whole three days. Uh, for $48,000, I'll think he got all day long. Yeah, but yeah. I, I have I have somebody else looking at it. They haven't said yes yet, so we'll see. All right. All right. And I make sure I stress it that this is second position loan, okay? Second. Yeah, and that's really why know. they generally get a higher percentage. Exactly. Yeah, why the percentage was so I mean, high. You know I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> yeah. Um, would have been nice to close it at 48 though yeah i get that yeah so yeah i got uh i got something cool for you i think all right so um one of the things i've learned is to go through um and i actually heard pace morby say this is that uh you don't have to scroll that far to get find a deal in his sub two group right so every once in a while, I scroll through his sub two group and boom, there's a deal. Um, basically, it's a uh, property up in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. Acquisition price is uh, 289.9. So let's just call it, you know, 290. 290. Four, four bedroom, two bath. Uh, they want 10% down. So $29,000 down. Uh, the interest rate is a three point. Uh, three, this is a uh, seller financing. This isn't sub two. This is this is a free and clear deal. Seller financing. So the seller wants three point five or three point seven five percent for thirty years, fixed, no balloon. Hmm. Yeah, it... yeah. <laughs> that's what I said. So I read it further. Um, so the uh, PITI is approximately fourteen ninety five a month. The assign the uh, the person that put together the deal wants a seven thousand dollars assignment fee, reasonable. Um, agent commission of uh, twenty nine hundred. So basically, to get in this deal, need about forty two hundred dollars. And um, I think this is like a twenty five hundred square foot house. So I was thinking um, I could easily add two more bedrooms in the living room dining room area. And mm -hmm. make this a six bedroom, two bath. And then uh, I went to pad split and used their calculator and mm -hmm. you know, to to put in two to do it, put in two bedrooms, which is basically just throwing up walls and maybe rerouting a little air conditioning to keep both rooms cold. Probably take about mm -hmm. 15 grand just to do the rehab. And that's you know probably on the conservative side. Mm -hmm. Um but basically, this uh, property will cash flow forty five hundred dollars a month. Or not cash flow. The uh, the revenue will be forty five hundred dollars a month. Um, but uh, net operating income on this would be right around twenty two forty eight. So subtract out the uh, twenty two forty eight because that's the operating income. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. My, no. Excuse me. Twenty four forty eight. Then we subtract out the fifteen hundred dollars a month for uh, the first. Let me do that again. Fifteen hundred. Yeah. Sorry, a bit late. So that's going to be about nine forty-eight. Right. So about nine hundred and forty-eight dollars a month in cash flow. Now that being said, that would be if somebody came in with the. Uh, 
with the uh, forty, you know, with the forty-two plus the fifteen, so we're probably looking at what fifty-five thousand dollars if that was equity. If not, we would just figure it out, you know, a monthly payment for the uh, for the second position to do the bridge, you know, to do the bridge and the build out. But I I thought that was a that was a pretty good deal. Yeah. Um... Now that being now that being said, um, I called the guy uh, on Saturday and he called me right back. Um, he, and by the time I called him, he already had like 30 people say they were interested <laughs> and, like, and I <laughs> called course. him today and he's like, I, 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 you know, before I put a lot of time and effort in and I wanted to, uh, um, call him up to see if it was still available, not under contract. And he actually said that he sent out, uh, 10 assignment fees on Sunday. Darn. So it, it, assignment contract. So, you know, yeah. it's one of those deals. He sends out the assignment contract and first person to send him in a, uh, EMD to the title company wins. Right. But I just want to let you know. I just wanted to let you guys know that I mean I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna continue working on it. One thing I've learned is sellers are liars and so are the buyers. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if he got anybody back today. He said he sent out 10 of them. Yeah, yeah 10 right. assi right. assignment contracts. Yeah. Right. Hey, he probably got it. I don't I I don't think I didn't look, but uh he probably wants uh like a three thousand dollar EMD or something or whatever. Um, like that, yeah. But uh, I just want to let you. I mean, I'm working on that. I mean, it's it's one of those deals that, uh, uh you know, I just happen to every once in a while I go through Pace's um, group, and there'll be a there'll be a deal in there. Yeah, I'm not on the subs group, but yeah, maybe I could find one on the other group too. They um, now, what I did one. is I looked up on Zillow because obviously it says there's a uh twenty nine hundred dollar agent commission well I mean that means it's a listed property yes so I went to Zillow and mm -hmm. lo and behold an inscription it says owner financing available okay so how do you think this wholesaler found this deal hmm. went to Zillow and went to Zillow. and typed in keywords owner finance owner finance yep and that, and then he went in and got a contract from the owner. And then he went in, negotiated a deal, and then he put it up in Pace's group. And you know he's got a bunch of people that recognize the same thing I said is this is a perfect pad split deal. Okay. And if you and actually then, uh, if you actually go back and watch the original video that Pace did three weeks ago, these are mm -hmm. almost the exact same numbers that Pace did on his first pad. On his first pad, yeah. So he he you know he he rolled all of the acquisition cost and the fifteen thousand dollar build out into the second, which he was getting from a Gator. Right. Wow. Yeah. So we gotta be fast. We gotta be looking at something like that. And, well, and you gotta exactly be that. you gotta be fast when you're trying to get him out of Pace's group. Yeah, that's true. Especially in the subgroup, the deals are not last in there at all. Well, one of the things that I do when I'm when I'm looking for pad split deals is I've actually got a spreadsheet where I will go into Zillow and I will just you know put in all my um, well you know on my website I I publish all the uh, market data and it's the the pad split cities are highlighted, right. So what I do is you know once a week or so I just go down through Zillow and I put in seller financing and I go through all this you know I search by city. And, and I've talked to eight or 10 realtors today that um, represent listings that are seller financed. Yeah, well, what what what's the best city to look? And I know the Florida market is hot and Dallas market is hot. So see, that's and the that's, thing. That's the yeah. thing. The markets are hot, but when it comes to seller financing, who cares? Okay. Here's yeah. Now, here's the deal. This one <laughs> is you've got a seller who gets it, wants 10% mm -hmm. down, which is normal. He's got, mm -hmm. he's offering 3.75. We are not going to get to see 3.5% mortgages for the rest of our lives. Never. <laughs> so the anyway. mortgage is more valuable than, than the property. Yep. Yeah. The pad split and, and the section eight and the, and, and going out and getting a regular mortgage, these properties, you cannot long-term rent them um, at seven, 8% mortgages. That's true. That's why yeah, seller financing is king now. Yeah, and he wants a thirty year. I wonder if he take a, 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 a early payout. Oh, absolutely. Most yeah. sellers want a balloon. Want early? Yeah, want a balloon. Like, but he's so he I went, said no balloon. I went through and I I got the gamut today. I was talking to uh, uh, one realtor who you know had a, a nice house that could be pad split, 
And um, I, you know, said you're offering seller financing. And she said the uh, seller, uh, this is like a $298,000 house. The seller wants 15, 50% down and 10% interest amortized over 30 years. I said, hey, can you tell me that one more time? 50% She, she down. said 50% down and 10% interest. Excuse I, me. I very politely said, is he a crackhead? <laughs> What city? Fifty <laughs> percent. I don't remember. I, I mean, that was that's one of those thirty-five second phone calls. Yeah, fifty percent uh, down and ten percent. I mean, I can 10%. do better. Mm -mm. I can do better with a mortgage. I know. Tell the find an agent and see what you do with that. And then I and then I had a guy, um, believe it or not, in San Antonio, Texas, um, and uh, you know they were reasonable. You know they wanted ten percent down. Um, they wanted a, a reasonable mortgage rate of like four and a half percent. But the guy's 83 years old. He is not going to do a 30-year mortgage. No. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I said, I'm 57. I don't know if I'd do a 30% mortgage. <laughs> nope, I'm um, not doing it. <laughs> but anyway, he, you know, he said he wanted like a, a, a six or five-year balloon. If I can get, if I can negotiate a seven, a seven-year balloon on that, I would do that deal. Yeah. Now. Um, I forgot what other city, but um, I ran across, I was in Texas, I might even be in Dallas, but I ran across a realtor who's got three seller financing listings and I called him up and he has said he's, he, he is delisting all of them on Monday because he's quitting the business. What? <laughs> three seller financing deals I found and the realtor is quitting on Monday. The re <laughs> okay. I and he's so frustrated, he gave me the names and phone numbers of the owners. <laughs> hey, I don't do the thinking for these people. <laughs> Buyer calls up and you're like, ah, forget you. I'm quitting the business. Mm. But that's what happened to me today. <laughs> yeah. He's quitting. He doesn't know how to do creative financing. Why is he quitting? He had a buyer call up that was interested in owner financing. All of them were pad split qualified. So they were three bedroom, two bath, and they were above 1,500 square feet. Yeah, we need to get in one of those deals. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Preach it to the choir. I yeah. know. And Preach that's what I told the guy with the deal up in Jacksonville. But you know what? When he tells me there, you know, like you said, it's a hot market. I was telling you about that rehab uh, from three, three weeks ago where I called the realtor, um, mm -hmm. what, 18 hours after he listed it. And he, he, he gets the business. He listed this house at 50% of ARV. And by the time I talked to him, he'd already had ten, nine other cash offers. Yeah. I yeah, mean, if, that was in 16 hours. So I get how hot Florida is, but um, yeah. I'm going to stay on this deal. If it, if it closes, you know, if he gets somebody, uh, you know, under contract, that's great. You know, if he was giving me a lot of crap, you know, I'm not going to rush and do something stupid. Yeah. Yeah, in order to get those deals, you have to be on those sites 24-7. Or, so, yeah. or you got to go out and find them yourself. Yeah, that's true. You know, it, yeah. this isn't this isn't a realtor that's that's doing this. This is somebody who's been trained and you know knows the deal, set it up correctly, and mm -hmm. then put it out to the people, you know, in the group yeah. that would rather, you know, compete in the group than they would of actually calling a seller. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when they get in a group, they get deals really fast. So, one of the other things I wanted to turn you guys on to, it was um, I forgot who I was talking to, but they turned me on to a, a new website. Um, maybe it was, was it, you know, Carol, it was you who was telling me about Max Maxwell, right? Max Maxwell? I know I've talked to no, him. No, I told you about Max yeah. Maxwell. Yeah. Who just said that? I told you. Oh, yeah. it's Farrah. That was Farrah, 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 you told Yeah. 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 Yeah, I uh, saw Max Maxwell on a on a Zoom call earlier, so maybe that's where I know the name from. Ferris. So anyway, um, I went out and checked out Propwire. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's like Privy, but it's free. Yeah, yeah. Propwire. And yeah. Privy generally doesn't have the uh, mortgage information. I mean, uh, Pro uh, Propwire's got information like like batch leads. Propwire or my my REA Pro. What's that? Oh, you went to Propware. You went to Max Maxwell's site. Yeah, the Propware.com site. Yeah. But all the stuff you're paying for with with uh, with bad privy or privy or, uh, you know, what's the other one everybody uses? But I mean, all that data is in there for free. Yeah. 
Yeah. How much what the heck am I paying because for? Because he makes stuff? his money with he makes his money on the VA cold calling. He has a whole acquisitions team. Um, they're going to work for me part time. They'll negotiate. They do comps. Um, you know, they'll close the deal for me when needed. Well, Max. Awful. Yeah. And he has he he sent me information and they have a closing rate of like they do out of on every thousand they'll do at least two closes three closes on a thousand leads. Hmm. Yeah, three percent. Okay. Yeah. But so um, that's what he makes his money from. So he wants you to go to his site to find the lead so you can give him you know give him the money on that end to make the calls and stuff. Totally get it. Well, when I was using PropStream, I mean, the only thing you're really going to pay for or uh, um, um, his site there, uh, PropWire, is, um, am I saying that correctly? You said PropStream, PropWire, the free one. PropWire, one free PropWire, one. PropWire, PropWire. The only thing it's you got to -R -R pay am I right? In the dot com, yep. And um, the only thing you pay for is uh, 10 cents for skip tracing. Skip tracing. It gives you the person's name, it gives you their address, and then it goes out and finds their cell phone number. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would, man, I'll do oh. that all day long. Yep. I'll do what all I do, long. what what I do for my skip tracing is I have a guy who uses a, a really nice platform and he does my skip tracing at four cents, four cents a lead. Really? Now what's yes. what's that platform? <laughs> <laughs> They're actually good though, the skip tracing, because a friend of mine used them. I don't know if you know Tracy Peckerney. She runs one of the groups I am in in, in uh, Facebook, on Facebook. And uh, they were the ones who recommended me. And they all said they're like, we got a lot of good leads from them. Like a lot of the numbers were active and they were correct. So what's that? What's that service? I'm sorry? What's the service? I can't. No, it's a, it's an individual person. Oh, all right, it's an individual person. Yeah. All right, somebody needs to be muted. I don't know. Somebody. So we're getting a lot of crosstalk from somebody. Yeah, it's not my end. That's not me. Adrian, could you please put your mic on on mute? How about that? that? I think I think that did it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So anyway, all right. So that's a private person. All right. So yeah, it's a private person. If you want his name, I can give it give it to you. You can try him out. It's four cents a lead. Sure. Yeah. Which isn't really bad. No, it's really good actually. Yeah, and he's very quick. Like I gave him fifteen hundred leads. I had it back and within. Like I gave it to him in the morning. I had it back in the evening. Fifteen? Did you say fifteen hundred? Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. I He's mean, I don't. Th I don't think I can. I can do fifteen hundred on on true people search. No, he has a system that he uses. Oh, amazing. So, I'll I'll WhatsApp you his. I'll text. I'll sorry. I'll email you his information. I have it on my WhatsApp. Okay. Great. I just WhatsApp him. I'm like, hey, I'm sending you this information. He's like, okay, when do you want it? Is it rush? I'll do it in a few hours. If not, I'll do it end of day. I'm like, end of day is fine. Okay. But, and uh, if, if you tell him it's a rush, there's no additional charge. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and the reason I say that is because um, what I did in uh, PropWire is I just picked out a city, Indianapolis, and I filtered for um, pre-foreclosures. Yeah. And damn, if it didn't pull up 138 pre-foreclosures. So I do that with, I also have my REI Pro, which I prefer actually to PropStream. I'm a PropStream and Privy. Um, they give you a lot of uh, comps. You can do your comps really well. You can filter out the comps and do them. Um, they do, you know, you have a lot of uh, things over there. They give you contracts. They'll give you, you can write up the offer right on my REI Pro. And um, I went in there and I put, you know, well, high equity pre foreclosure, and I got about eight hundred properties right. in all of Florida. Right. So that's what I've been doing. But I wanted to actually ask you if you know how or you know anybody who can guide me on how to do a 
ad campaign on Facebook because I know people who are actually having home sellers call them based on their Facebook campaigning. Yeah, I am not a Facebook advertiser. So if there's anybody in the group that knows how to run Facebook ads effectively, jump in. Okay, because I'm trying to do that. I mean, it would be really nice to have them call you instead of chasing them. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know? There's a guy. Oops, sorry. It's okay. There, There's a guy. Um, I'll have to look up his information. He's out of Utah. And I got him from... Um, Jesus. Sorry, this call is... This, all right, sorry about that. Okay. He's... um. I got him from Astro. Okay. He's in Utah. I think his name is Josh. Oh, I don't know. Let me look. Okay. I'll put my I'll put my information in the chat. Just just text me. Okay. Um, let me look at it. But he tries to get um, direct a seller through Facebook. Yeah. By going and through each, not just real estate, but like people who sell stuff in different um, cities. He uses that and he's able to acquire, he said, and I don't know, I didn't look at his bank account, right. uh, a quarter million per year. Wow. So, I, I mean, that's what I know somebody who does that. And she's not, I've told her a couple of times, can you walk me through? Can you walk me through? But when you get the silent treatment on that question, then you know the person doesn't want to walk you through. And the thing is, you know, you the guy may have made a quarter million, but did he have to give a quarter million to Zuckerberg? Yeah, that's the other question. <laughs> What's the cost? Yeah. You know, I, I don't know all that. I don't know. I, I'm not, I've just started going on Facebook um, since the real estate thing. I had it, but I've never really been there on, on it. I've never been active. So I have no idea how to do these things. Yeah, but, and for me, it's a full time job. So I I start it and then I just shut it off because I don't have time to babysit it twenty four seven. Oh, you have to do it twenty four hour, like full time. Facebook advertising a lot add harder. Out and be done to do it and make money and not waste money. It's a lot harder than it looks. So it's not worth the time then. Or find somebody that knows what they're doing because I'm not that guy. Okay. I I've tried <laughs> myself and. Yeah, you know, for my for my fishing business, and I just spent I spend more than I make, so I'm obviously yeah. doing. Something. Okay, so I will reach out to you, um, Dennis, and then hopefully talk to Josh and see if it's even worth it. But at least get some idea on it, because I'm trying to find different resources to source direct to seller. And a friend of mine who does real estate, and this is a very weird state, she does it, and she's out of Wisconsin. She gave me a really good idea because she uses it. She said, go to real, uh, to these people who do estate sales. Yep. She said, estate sales usually deal with people who are, who just passed away. So they'll be able to connect you to the homeowner. That is a fact. So she said those, she says she gets a lot of, properties like that mm -hmm. and she gets them pre-probate because you know everybody contacts the estate sales people really quick the only thing i will caution you because i've done a lot of probate deals is um you have to have a lot of patience with probates because you're going to start dealing with the courts and the courts move at the speed of cold molasses yeah <laughs> i'm not kidding I've got, I've got i've got a probate deal i'm working on right now it's over a year yeah and i should have i should have been able to close on it in 30 days for a twenty nine thousand yeah. dollars assignment fee, yeah, I I understand what you're saying, but at least it's a it's a resource, you know. Yeah, and then the or other thing, the other thing with probate, person who's selling a second house. The other thing with probates is get used to work talking to attorneys, and the attorneys will frustrate you. Uh, I had to talk to an attorney today, and he <laughs> was he spent most of the conversation telling me how great attorney he was. Yeah. And all I could, all he would, if I don't let, if I let this guy get involved, he is going to blow up my deal up in Chicago. Uh, and I'm like, dude, the seller and I have already agreed on all the terms. We don't need you to go in and notify everybody of what's about to happen. Yeah. So. And it, an attorney, I spoke to a realtor 
who talked who talked my ear off. I I could actually take a nap between the conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he just kept going. All about himself, how good he is. Yeah. So um so I want to give you an update on that is is uh, that Chicago deal. Um I have a uh, a title company up there that says that they uh, can't clear title without uh, a uh, a quiet title uh, process. And then, of course, that's why I had to talk to this attorney and found out that uh, they don't do quiet title in the state of Illinois. Oh, wow. Okay. So the title companies ask for documents that don't exist. Oh. So this is a situation where I now have to educate the title company. And this yeah. is a title company who I vetted and said, have you do have you done subject to deals before? Yes. Have you done deals in Chicago before? Yes. And it's turning out that they didn't. Oh wow. So we fall back on the rule. Sellers are liars and so are the buyers. And so are the title companies. Yeah. And that sucks because you know, lease of time. So I called my rep and I'm she's like, I'll get on it with my manager because um last friday before i had spoken to the attorney this morning that found out that illinois doesn't do quiet title um i said to the to the person that i've been working with at my title company what specific documents do you need them to send you to prove that this is you had the quiet title done and they just went right. to uh to uh what is it wiki or wiki whatever and sent me the definition the legal definition of what a quiet a quiet title was what is a quiet title? It's just to make sure that there's no other liens uh, associated with the title. Okay. And it's done by a judge. Once a judge signs off on it, then anything that was out there if that didn't come forward, the judge wipes it off. But uh, the more story is they don't do that process in the state of Illinois. Oh, okay. This, this property was bought out of a tax deed sale. And once once they transfer the deed, that title is then cleaned. Oh, Okay. So, so that being said, you know, every once in a while in our business, because of what we do, our, with what we do is we fix other people's house problems. Right. And not everybody's on the same page. So you become, what I realized, because I've had a lot of these go sideways like this, is you got to babysit this now every step of the way. This is a job that the title company should be doing, but they're going to screw it up if you let them handle it by themselves. So now I gotta I gotta shepherd this thing step by step by step by step. Right, right. So that's what's going on in Chicago. And like I said in the email, the other thing I'm gonna talk about is the deal that I'm trying to do with Alexis Vasquez, uh or Veliquez. I can't even say your na last name. Sorry, brother. Um, but we're that we're doing down in Dallas. Um, and uh the deal was going along fine until the realtor got involved. Oh yeah. So in other words, what what is going on there? Oh, That's wow. not good. Why am I getting that? How do I get rid of that? I don't know. Oh, son of a bitch. How do I kick that person out? Does anybody know how to? Here, here we go. Oh. Can you delete them? I'm trying. Oh, that sucks. I know. Somebody thought that was a good idea. There it is. Uh... There we go. Okay. Anyway. Um, can I can I chime in on something really quick? Because I have a question. Hang on yeah. a second. Let, let me finish this. I'm so sorry that you guys had to deal with that. <laughs> some, I'm, people, I'm... some people's children. <laughs> no kidding. I'm uh, reporting it right now. It looks like Russian language, or it looks like some other country language. Oh, there he is. Gone. I'm sending you. I just, uh, yeah, I just reported it and got rid of it. I'm what sending you it? that gentleman's name, um, Farah. Okay, thank you. 
and I found his email. So okay, perfect. Um, I do have a question. What is Pat Split? Oh, um, all right. So three weeks ago, um, I saw Pace put out a video about this new startup company. It's I don't even think, think it's two years old yet. It's called Pad Split, and what Pad Split does is they take a single family house. So let's say you got a three bedroom, two bath, and a twenty five hundred square square feet. So you got three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and probably a big living room and a big dining room combined. And what they'll do in that dining room and living room is they'll actually add two more bedrooms to the house. So you're not increasing the footprint of the house. So it doesn't affect the county tax rolls and all that stuff. But what you're doing is you're adding two more bedrooms and then you, uh, they put on doors with electronic locks on it. And then what they do is pad split rents out the individual room. And they, they, end, they and rent out the individual room by the week. So in a three bedroom, two bath, like the one up in Jacksonville that I was talking about, um, that uh, four bedroom, two bath, um, it's probably going to rent out for somewhere around 21, 22, 20, maybe $2,300 a month up in Jacksonville. If you were going to get like a one family now by adding two more bedrooms, um, and renting it for 175 bucks a week, which is market for, for that, you can increase the total monthly revenue of that house to 4,500 bucks. Mm. Pad split finds all of the renters and collects all of the revenues and uh, makes, you know, they bring them in and evict them and all that stuff. So they do all the property management and they do that for a 15% fee. Now, traditional, a traditional property manager is going to take 10%. So I thought, you know, with pad split doing the volume and their average person stays for a minimum of nine months. And what, what, uh, from what I've, I called my local rep here in Orlando and she said, um, they've got a backlog of people that want to rent rooms. The thing that's holding pad split back is they don't have enough properties. But can I ask you, have you looked at the reviews? Because I did, and they're not very good. You looked at the reviews? Yeah, pad split reviews of the people who stay there. Like they review the spot, they review the location, right? They've been... Uh -huh. Like they had to pay back money on a couple of things. Go to the Bid Better Business Bureau, and there are other reviews. They're not. They're not very. Like I read them, and I was like, okay, do I really want to work with somebody has this bad reviews? You know, the thing about it is, is you're gonna get that. Okay. I get it. You're gonna consider the type of person that rents the room. Yeah, that's what they said. Like there were thieves and crackheads and drug addicts. Yeah. And then in the middle of that, you'll get these few good people who are in the middle of moving or moving to a new place and don't have a lot of money. And they get stuck. Like the cops get called. Pat Split tells them, if you feel unsafe in your room, call the cops. So the cops come in there all the time, apparently. Right. right. I mean, you know, in a, in a situation... How does that impact me as the homeowner? Because at the end of the day, it's my property. Well, it impacts you if they tear the place up. But, um, you know, if you, you know, if you stay on top of it, you know, um, I imagine you could work out some sort of deal. Like, you know, if, if the cops have to be called on somebody, you're out. Boom. Zero tolerance policy. Okay. Now, if you get somebody that calls the cops on people all the time, that's the person who's got to go. Right. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I just read an article that I found on Google that pad split is growing by leaps and bounds. I mean, they were talking about how fast they're growing in Houston. Right, right. No, I understand that. I was just concerned about the reviews, wanted to know what you think about it. Yeah. And in, in a growing business like that, you're going to get bad reviews. Trust me, I've grown my own business and People okay. will just be, I will tell you what I've learned in business with my marine manufacturing is people will buy my product and break it because of their own stupidity um, and then return it and tell me it's defective. And okay. I learned that if you, tr you know, if you try to fight them, it's like, no, you broke it. I can, I can tell that you broke it on your own. You know, 
they will savage you online. They'll find every review site they can find. What I've oh. learned is just, even if these idiots are, are taking advantage of you, I send them a brand new part and say, go away. Okay. I mean, it's just the nature of, of, of I've had people buy from me um, and then uh, they will not have it. They'll, they'll have it shipped um, via FedEx. And uh, when FedEx delivers, uh, in between FedEx delivering and the time they order for me, they'll cancel it with a credit card company. So oh FedEx will deliver. And then I get notified after it's delivered that they canceled it with their credit card company. I go back to the credit card company and show them the delivery receipt from FedEx. And because the person didn't sign for it, the credit card company gives them their 100% refund. Oh, my God. That is so bad. That happens all the time. That's just the world we live in. You got to factor it in as, as a cost of doing business. And a cost of doing business. Yeah. That's yeah, just that part of it. Yeah, that happens all the time. People are crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, look what we just had. Some idiot decided it was a good idea to upload pornographic video. And yeah, yeah. they do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, For what reason? I mean, somebody sitting somewhere and wherever they are laughing and giggling think that was funny? So I have one. I have another question. I I, I don't I don't pay mind to that anymore because there are so many dumbasses out there in the world. Um, I try to just bypass it instead of getting aggravated. It's just that's just the way of the beast with these people, especially with this internet. But I do have a a, a legit, um, educated question. What you got? So I went to a um, flip um, conference for three days this weekend. And they were talking about subject to contractuary. Do you know what that is? So getting the getting the getting the property under contract subject to and then the disposing with it the way you want to dispose with it, but not keeping it as subject to. I have I have I don't under all right, so they get so they go out and they get a property under contract in the terms of the financing, are they going to take over the original seller's mortgage? They're going to take over the seller's mortgage, but then they, they get it to where it's no longer under the seller's um, name anymore at all. The only they do do it at the beginning of, of the uh, deal. So they can dispose of it the way they want to, whether it be buy and hold and, and rent it out or something like that. It was very interesting to hear. I heard a lot of things like, you know, oh, uh, Jesus, here we go again. What the fuck? Uh, anyway. Sorry, let me see what I can do about getting rid of this. The other thing that was very interesting was um, I told did you, you get uh, did you get him, Mike? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. What 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 I did I you, use a I use a VPN, so yeah. What's that? I use VPN. How does a VPN help? Yeah, I don't know. Um, that uh, calculator that I was talking to you about that you said was um, what did you call it? Al analysis paralysis. <laughs> yeah, it'll help you get over analysis paralysis. <laughs> It was very interesting. They were using it, and I used it Monday because I was I was calling you because I, you're probably one of the biggest people that I trust in this in this business. Um, bigger than um, I'm not gonna be. I'll, I'll be straight honest. Than Jamil. Okay. Yeah, me um, too. I used a calculator, and I argued with Keegley on price i had a they had a pri they had a property for 105 okay um i did the arv on it, it and i asked the guy what was going on he goes it was a total rehab so i did it at 55 and i was like at 172 but i used a calculator and it wasn't computing back wasn't computing back a profit and i was like oh my god so I went to this thing this weekend and they were using a calculator so that you could figure out, you know, what the profitability would be for a flip. And I was, you know, minusing my wholesale fee, but I went today with, to this calculator and I had to be at 140. Now the gentleman bought the property 
recently for a hundred thousand dollars. Right. And he was trying to make another hundred K for profit. I mean, that's a home run. You, you know that. And I know that. And I think even Stevie wonder knows that if he couldn't even, you know, hear or see this stuff. But what I, what I really uh, found intriguing was Keatley thought it was a good deal. There's like, you should buy this deal. And then a half hour later, because this, this game is about right now, you have to, you have to, you have to make your mark right now. You can't think about it. You just have to do it. Um, someone bought the pro someone uh, put it under contract as of this morning or of, of 12 o'clock uh, mountain standard time. It's no longer a deal. He has taken it off the market because it didn't go through. Cause I bet you it went to contingency and they try to retrade. You know, and it's kind of like that, that deal I was telling you guys about up in Jacksonville. I called the guy up and he's like, Oh, 30 people told me they were interested. I called him this morning, you know, before I put a lot of time and effort in it, is it still available? And he's like, I've sent out 10 assignment contracts. Well, if, if I got to move that fast, that makes me nervous. I mean, and I'm not the kind of guy that puts stuff under contract and then backs out of contracts. So, you know, if it's a deal, it's a deal. But if I, if I feel rushed at all, then that, then you're prone to making mistakes. Now, if you got a lot of money, you got a two hundred and forty million dollar portfolio. You can afford to screw up. You're you're your Grant Cardone, and you can walk away from a two million dollar EMD, knock yourself out. But I can't waste that kind of money, so I move I move slow just to be conservative and and not make mistakes. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I felt because when I saw the numbers, and numbers don't lie. People may lie. But numbers don't lie. Yeah. And I do, do I'm doing basic mathematics here and it's on a chart that, that computes it. So it's like a, it's like a calculator. Um, and I kept redoing it. And when I got on the phone with Keegley, they were like, this is a good deal. I'm like, I'm looking at the profitability guys. You're not going to make only a thousand dollars. This is not a good deal. We, we, I, I can't, I can't sign up for this one. He goes, you should get this deal or it's going to be gone. And I'm like, it doesn't sound like a good deal. He goes, he goes, listen, his name is Alex. And he goes, listen, I applaud you for trying and doing your best and going beyond your means to comp and underwrite stuff. But um, we're just gonna have a difference of opinion. This is a good deal. But it, the funny thing is now it's not even on the market. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> what was the person from Keegley saying that Keegley would buy it? Yeah. I mean, is Keegley going to buy it or are they going to go find a buyer and make the difference? I think they're going to buy, buy, find a buyer and make the difference because he's the acquisition manager. Well, yeah, they're just man in the middle, you know? Um, so, I mean, in that situation, if Keegley's telling you they could get the thing dispoed for you, man, it might have been worth it. But the, the, the point that I'm trying to, I don't know if I'm making anything, I might just be spinning my wheels and sp speaking out of, um, of wrong context, is I was trying to do the right thing by all parties, like to make sure that A, I get a deal, B, the end buyer gets a deal, and, and well, A is the most important, the seller is satisfied. Right, because if we don't satisfy the seller, then there's no me no reason to do a deal. But B, I'm getting my little chunk of change, my little cheese, and then C, the end buyer is getting their chunk of change. Yeah. But it didn't work out that way, and I don't want to put deals under contracts where I have to try to retrade and put my foot in my mouth, and now everybody's pissed off at me. They're pissed off at you know at you at you and at you for doing something that I should have did a better homework on. Yeah. And again, that's why I stay at the, you know, if I'm wholesaling a deal, a rehab deal, you got to be at 40% because the buyers are at 50%. Buyers might go to 55. If they're, if they're inexperienced and they don't know what they're doing, doing it might go as high as 60 or 65, but an experienced rehabber right now is buying at 50 cents. So you got to be at 40. <laughs> and those deals are out there. You got to sift sift through a lot of junk and talk to a lot of people that are you know, way overpriced, but the deals are out there. 
though there was a there's another investor that I looked at today and he had a he had a property that was trying to sell for 286 which sounds like a good deal but it you know looking at everything near it it was not a good deal you had to be close to 209 or 217 to, to make it work it's kind of like what i was saying florida is ridiculously competitive right now texas is ridiculously competitive i found that rehabber down in san antonio and he's like there's nothing out there there's nothing out there i'm like we come across them all the time but you know i'll send them to you he's like well i gotta have some meat on the bone i'm like we only give you good deals and arizona is ridiculously hot vegas is ridiculously hot well folks there's new a jersey whole lot is getting there new jersey is getting there the the idea is there's a whole lot of other towns and cities in america i mean a whole lot so like I, I've been talking about for the last six weeks, I stay away from the guru states, the states that all the gurus say, you know, go Florida, go Texas, go Arizona. I, stay away from California, stay away from Illinois, stay away from New York. <laughs> Cause they got crazy laws. I'll be honest with you. I'm doing these deals in Chicago and I've learned a lot about Chicago and I'm not going to be doing a lot of stuff in Chicago. Just because, I mean, it's just, I, I would never consider owning anything in those three states because in California, in Illinois, it can take you two years to evict somebody. How'd you like to get somebody in one of your properties and carry them with no income for two years? Oh yeah, the bank's still going to want their money. But that's what I'm saying is in the hot markets or in these crazy states with crazy laws, just go to other markets. How's North Carolina and Georgia? Very good. Very, those are very good states. Atlanta's going to be a little bit on, on the competitive side, but Atlanta's a big area. A lot of, a lot of uh, times, um, mm -hmm. if you go just outside, like within 45 minutes of that central Atlanta market, you know, if you go north to Dunwoody or if you go south to Macon, you know, you can find a lot of deals um, on the outside because there's, there's less competition than the, than the the big city centers and the okay. reason why is most most real estate investors are buying the same lists from the same data centers from batch leads from prop stream from you know they're buying okay. the same lists but if you go the extra mile you know the little extra effort and go 45 minutes away you cut your you cut your competition but now by 80 percent right right Can you share the, the calculator that you're talking about that you're using, um, Dennis, if you don't mind? Yeah, um, send me your email. Um, it's going to say um, a provision on it. Um, I sent it to, to Mike. Um, just bypass the provision. If you got it from somebody, don't tell them you got it from me. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Okay, I, sent, I put, I I put my email really in good. the chat. Yeah, I, I think it I think it works good. Um, I'm not sure what um, Mike thinks about it. I just found it and um, I just don't know. I just I just thought it was, you know, the numbers don't lie. It makes it a lot easier to look at the profitability at the end for the end buyer and um, not guesstimate on, you know, where we're going so that the deal goes through. Because I don't know. I, I'm new to this. So please. Please correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. Always correct me, and I have no problem with criticism. But one thing that I I, I am realizing with uh, real estate is you need to find end buyers first. Yeah. Before you go and acquire something, because if you're over here trying to play hot potato, it makes you look like a jerk, and it makes everybody in your region look like a jerk. And then you get on these calls, and you just feel like like the biggest jerk and don't know what to do. So I just think that having more cash buyers around and knowing where, where they're going to be at so you can get the, the deal moved. And now on the other hand, though, on the flip side of it, there are people out here in this, in our groups that we know of the, the Morbies and the, and the, and the uh, Damgies, there are sharks. They will snake your deal. Right. They just will. If you don't know what you're doing and the, the, you feel like you're reluctant on it, they will take it. So I'm not one of those people. I'm very transparent. I would. I'll Welcome give, to PropWire. Right. Sorry. So I'll I'll give the I'll give my um, shirt off my back literally to anyone 
Um, yeah, I'm just I care about whatever you. information I have as well. Um, you know, I don't mind that. And I think if you share, what what is yours will come to you. It doesn't matter if you're sharing what you're sharing, you know? Yeah. yeah. There's, so, there's, there's like 300 million households in America. Nobody yeah. could get to them all. No. And like I said, what is supposed to be yours will come to you no matter what. And the thing about the thing about it is the listings that are out there today are going to be different tomorrow. And the listings yeah. the day after that will be different. So they're, you know, it's just this constant churning, you know, you've just got to be I, constantly looking. And that's, that's why I have forms like this. So I know I do the same thing over and over and over. over, and over. And over. I spoke to a, actually, they invited me on a webinar called Mom's House. Have you ever heard of that? Mom's Homes, Mom's House. Mm -hmm. They only deal with, they call themselves, they don't call themselves real estate investors. They call themselves real estate transitioners because they only deal with senior citizens who are moving into uh, old, you know, assisted living facilities or old homes or somebody who's passed away like that. And what they do, where they get their leads from, is they connect with these assisted living facilities because they have the people come in. Yeah. And then those people connect, contact them and say, hey, this person's here. She needs money to sell her house quick, you know, because she has to pay us. Can you help her get rid of your house? And then those people start sending them things. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. So I'm thinking of making a list of all the assisted living facilities because they actually went into a lot of detail. They gave us exactly who we should contact at these places. Of course, they say join them and they can do a lot of the work for you and you pay them, but that's not happening anymore. I paid, I put $17,000 into mentorships and I don't want to put more before I make any more money. Um, so... But, you know, I can contact the assisted living facility director and marketing person and say, hey, I can give you a referral fee. I can give you a finder's fee, whatever you want to call it. If you have anyone moving in who needs to sell their house, let me know. What you're talking about and your last three things that you've talked about are all relationships. Right. So when you're starting a relationship, think of it like dating. You don't walk up to somebody wherever you find people attractive <laughs> and go, hey, I think you're really pretty. Let's get married. I haven't dated in 33 years. So, you know, it's hard for me to know. I'm but that's what I'm saying. When you call somebody, I'm saying, hey, listen, I'm looking to buy houses from old people and I'll give you money if you tell me where they are. They are going to run from you. Right, right. It's, think of it like dating. Think of it like, hey, how you doing? My name's Mike and... um you know, I live here in Lakeland. Right. And, uh, you know, if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. And then a couple next week, call up like, hey, you know, I'm in the real estate business. We help people solve problems. If you know anybody's got a problem, let me know. And then the next week, call up. You got to ease into that relationship. Okay. Yeah, don't don't run up there and go, hey, let's get married. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and okay. once you once you start thinking about your conversations like that, then will people will warm up to you. Just remember they warm up to you slow. Okay. Same thing with probate attorneys, same thing with you know, with people that you know that when you call foreclosure, oh here we go again. Good. They change oh, ID right. and they're coming in. Ugh. Boy, somebody, uh, I must have aggravated somebody because uh, this person's coming in from uh, many different uh, accounts. Yeah. And I think it's the same thing with the divorce attorneys as well. Like I same have thing. to call same them thing. slowly and tell them, but you know, with them, it's hard not to say who you are because they're like, oh, you're going through a divorce. Don't worry about it. We'll be there for you. And I'm like, no, I'm not going through a divorce. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but like I said, it, 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 each one of the different strategies you've talked about is, is a relationship. Yeah. It's the same thing with realtors. Yeah. You know, if you hey, my name's Mike. I'm looking for fixer uppers. You got anything? No, bye. Hung up. Well, the person's on the other end going, the hell was that? <laughs> yeah. 
But I think for me, building the relationship is important because I feel it is a, a long-term resource then to get homes. Let me, instead of one of my better realtors, my best realtor, to be honest with you, in Orlando, what she does, she spends an hour every day. And what she does is she does, uh, she does comparables in the neighborhood that she farms. And all she does is she prints out um, about a half a, a dozen or so of these flyers that just talk about the value of the person's house in today's market. And on it, it's got her contact information. And she gets out of her car. I mean, you know, and it's Florida, it's July. <laughs> you know, it's right. five degrees. It's not fun this time of year. February, January, yeah. And July, August, not so much. But yeah. she just goes and knocks on doors. And she's like, hey, you know, my name's Karen, and um, I just want to let you know I'm your local realtor, and uh, I just want to you know give you this. Uh, I did a comparative market analysis. This is what your house is worth, and if you ever have any uh, uh, realtor needs, give me a call. And then she turns around and walks away. Mm. And in because she's from Maine, and she started in January. She went from moving here from Maine to Orlando, and in three months, she is the top lister. Wow. Yeah, to which management actually now follows her around trying to figure out what she's doing. But <laughs> two things she does. She's not trying to sell people stuff. She's providing value. And she does it every single day. Right. So when you're calling, you know, um, homes. Or you're calling probate attorneys or you're calling divorce attorneys. How can you be of value to that service? How can you be a value yeah. to that business? And then right. them doing business with you is a side effect. Right. Okay. So what you might want to do is, uh, you know, especially if you're approaching uh, senior citizen, you know, uh, you know, assisted living facilities. Yeah. When I do a probate, the biggest thing you got to do is get rid of the stuff. Right. So what I what I've learned to do is I tell people. Yeah, well, you know, they're like, do you want to buy it? Like, no, we don't want to buy it. Um, but what we'll do is we'll give it to, you know, Catholic charities or we'll give it to the Salvation Army. I don't, right. I don't, I don't give it to a Goodwill because that's a for-profit company. Okay. But I, 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 I'll give it to a local church. It doesn't have to be Catholic charities. It'll be any church. Okay. Other temples will take it. The mosques will take it. You know, not so much the mosques, but you know what I mean? The religious organizations will take, will take the stuff and give it to the needy. Right. Most people feel good about that. Yeah. Or maybe you can bring in someone who'll do the estate sale thing, you know, wrap it up, do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Your local auctioneer does it. Make money for them. Yeah. But that's why I'm, I'm just brainstorming with you. How can you provide value? Right, right. For that business. Because when you become valuable, then they'll start referring your stuff. And then moving into the assisted living facility, that would be the same value they provide, right? That's, that's the same value you'd provide, helping them get rid of their stuff because they're moving right. from a house to a one room. That's right. Exactly. And trust me, um, what markets are you working? So I do Jersey, New Jersey, and Tampa, Orlando. I can absolutely tell you as authority in Florida for 30 years, the only thing the heirs want, microwave, TV, and a check. Who wants this? They oh, couldn't. That's they, they, yeah, mo most families don't care about helping their parents. Yeah, I know. I've seen that. I know. It's, it's sad. It's the reality. So if you can be the person that cares, that's the person they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna lean on. Right. You know, and especially when you're dealing with the three topics you're talking about, you got to be a human being. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, with assisted living, probates, even divorce, it's a yeah. sad situation. So I know we're getting, you and I are kind of dominating the conversation. So tell me about your numbers. How did your numbers go last week? My numbers? They yeah. didn't go very well this week. I wasn't doing too well. Um, I had to go for an MRI, I had to go for a couple of other tests. So I only did calling for three days out of the five. But okay. I did do 25 each, and that's my goal. Yep. Is to make because I don't have the mojo dial or anything. Uh -huh. So my goal is to do 25 calls to realtors, which I did. 25 calls. I have a list of end buyers 
that my friend who's a property management company pulled for me. So I call 10 of those every day. I'm leaving messages right now. I haven't got called back. Realtors are better because they tell them I want to buy a house. And then they call me back. What's your phone service? I'm sorry? What phone service are you using? Mm, Google. Okay. After you place a phone call, when you leave a message, yeah. send, a send a text. Okay. That's what I do. As a matter of fact, I'm not big on leaving messages because I know nobody ever calls anybody back. But yeah. what I do is as soon as I get that answer machine, I hang up and I send them a text. Okay. I get more response from the texts. Okay. Yep. So that's been my goal is to call do 10 realtors and 10 and buyers. I do 35 calls a day. Mm -hmm. Then I look for properties. So I found, you know, found that list. How um, many, how many offers are you getting out every day? None yet. Okay. That's going to be a problem. Yeah. And that's why I'm I'm working to get the VA so that they can start calling. I can pull the lists and find the deals and they can make the calls. And then we can get the end buyer and sell it out. I have a minimum of five offers a day, written or verbal. Okay. okay. So like, you know, when I'm calling up um, these realtors, I'm like, hey, you know, I see you listed it and, you know, uh, you're offering seller financing. Tell me about the financing. I don't even ask about the house. <laughs> I want to know about the seller <laughs> financing first. Okay. Because if the financing's right, the house is just a bonus. Right. You know? But, you know, and they, they tell me about it and like, you know, this is what I can do. And they give me a yes or no. That's an offer. Okay. So you don't, don't, don't think that offer, all, all offers have to be written. And I'm just using the spreadsheet. I highlight the road that I've called. And if somebody calls me back, I'll change the color. Yeah. Um, so I know that they called me back. So I have to look at notes because the notes are right at the other end of the spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, and what I, I, I learned this from Nate Harris is, you know, and I, I, I think John Galan does it too. He's got a spreadsheet for the day and, you know, he's got the property address, the agent, the phone number, or if it's a direct seller, uh, you know, the, like the Zillow link or whatever, the, wherever the lead came from no to what happened and he just goes down through and you know and uh if he like you talk to a realtor that's a realtor investor well now you get a buyer you switch right. to that buyer conversation i put that into a separate spread spreadsheet so now i added another buyer to my san antonio buyers list okay so i just keep one spreadsheet i just have different tabs like um yeah, there you go. City. so my tampa is one yeah uh, you know, New Jersey is one because New Jersey is all over the place. New Jersey is very different from Florida. Like Florida is very like city. This city is very yeah. different from that city. New Jersey is not like that. We're very fluid. We're yeah. more county. So it's very different. Well, it's kind of like, it's kind of like what Dennis Sylvan was saying earlier is, is, you know, he, he needs, he, he, he's making a realization that he needs to have buyers before he has sellers. Well, yeah. that's how you get buyers lists is by calling sellers. Sellers. Yeah. When you come across somebody who's like, yeah, I'm an agent. I'm, you know, this is my property. I rehabbed it, you know, but I, you know, I'm constantly looking for properties. Right. right. So I'm like, oh, hey, tell me about this. What, what do you need to buy it at? Well, I need to, you know, make it worth my while. So he wasn't going to give me his buy box. So I said, well, if I've got a property, you know, that's all fixed up worth a hundred grand, what do you need to buy it at? Right. Well, I don't know. I'm like, well, would you take it for fifty thousand? Oh, yeah, sure, it would. Well, he just told you he buy he's buying it fifty cents on a dollar. Right. So a lot of times, you know, they they don't want to give you their buy box, but just ask them a different way. Hey, property's worth a hundred grand. Would you take it for fifty? Right, right, right. right. It, 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 and then it, uh, and I said, I said I actually said to him, I've got a property that all fixed up worth a hundred grand, but it's a full gut rehab. Would you take it at fifty cent? You know, at fifty thousand? Yeah, I would do that. Oh, you'll take you'll take full guts at fifty cents on a dollar. Yes. Well, what would you pay for a lipstick? Because right. obviously that's less work. So in other words, he's not he's not this guy today did not want to give me his buy box, but just by asking him a couple of different ways, I figured out exactly what his buy box was. Right. <laughs> So you make your five offers to realtors? Realtors, sellers, yeah. Anybody's got something for, for sale. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, yeah, here's an example. I got a guy who, who's who got three properties listed with seller finance and he's quitting the business. And he gives me the okay. seller's phone numbers. 
Right, right, right. I started with a realtor. Now I got three sellers I got to call. Yeah. And then with uh, with PropWare, you know, forget the realtor. I'm going straight to the seller. Right. Because, of, because like the deal that I'm working with uh, Alexis down in Dallas. I mean, you know, we were working directly with the seller and then all of a sudden this expired listing turned into a listing again somehow magically oh okay yeah so i told alexis i'm like yeah get that get that realtor to send you a copy of his uh listing agreement and see if it actually expired or not right because this realtor is claiming they just paused the listing yeah last time i checked contracts end they don't pause <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. You know, it's just for me, it's just getting all the pieces into place. I'm just starting to get consistent. Yeah. So, and yeah. I, was, I know that I can't call the seller. I have tried and tried, but it's really hard. Nobody calls you back. And then no. get very discouraged. And I'm like, okay. So, I think for me to transfer that to a VA will be more productive. Well, the thing is, until, you, that can, for me. until you can do it, you can't teach it to VA. But they come trained. By who? By Max Maxwell. That means you're not trained. No, he's not. I mean, I can train them. We so this is how it works. We interview them, and then we can sit with them for one week to train them in what we want to do. Right. So I know what to do. I mean, I have the whole script for the callers and everything. It's just that nobody picks up, and it's very dis discouraging for me. I'm like, I don't want to do this. Yeah, I totally get it. Yeah, direct to seller, you got to have a little bit of alligator skin. Yeah, and it's like nobody picks up. So I'm figuring like they can do the direct to seller while I do the realtors and the other, the divorce attorneys and the, you know, the estate salespeople and all that. The relationship building part I can do while they can do the direct to seller. You know, the thing about it is, is you got to remember, and it's, it's on my lead sheet, the most important part of what we do is motivation. If the seller yeah. has no motivation, forget it. You're wasting your time. Yeah. Doesn't matter how bad you want or how good a deal it could be. Without a motivation, there's no deal there. No, but the thing is, sometimes they are motivated. So I'll give you an example. Like, does this house in Metachin? It's already in pre foreclosure. I've called this idiot. Sorry. I've called this guy. <laughs> no, it's, don't apologize to me. I'm calling the same people like multiple times and i'm like i can help you out here you know we're here to help we can make it easy for you because he has another house like four streets away i have his current address i went and looked at his house and it's gorgeous so my husband's like maybe he doesn't need the money so he doesn't care so now his house is in pre-foreclosure we're telling him we can help him take it, take it off his hands so he doesn't have to go into foreclosure he can make some money on it and he won't call me back and I'm like, what should I do to do for a guy? Like, I don't want to knock on his house and say, I want to buy your pre-foreclosure house. Maybe I should. Well, there's an art to door knocking. Yeah, which I don't have. And the thing about it is, you just got to get over the idea that people are scary. People are just people. That person, when it comes to foreclosure and take it from somebody who's been through foreclosure, it... it it, there's a lot that goes into it and you start doubting yourself. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anger. There's all kinds of different emotions. And if you're the person to go knock on the door and say, listen, I'm here to help and stick out your hand. Sometimes that's all it takes. Yes, but that's it. I left him a message saying I'm here to help. Matt, you, but you got to understand something. When somebody's in pre-foreclosure, their phone get, it gets blown up all day long, all night long. Their text messages get blown up all day long, all night long. And they're getting five or six letters or postcards every day in the mail. So he's like 15 minutes from my house. And it's a really good house. I mean, I would take this house, renovate it, and give it on a midterm rental because it's 10 minutes from JFK Hospital, which is a huge, huge, huge hospital here. Oh, All right, maybe, so maybe you need to go down and knock at the door. Because as, as Mike says, they're getting 100 phone calls a day. And then, so really just go down there and knock on the door and tell them you live in this neighborhood. You're right up the road. Fair, you got a Dunkin' Donuts or a Tim Hortons or a Krispy Kreme near you? Yeah, there's a Starbucks right there. Stop by and, well, I wouldn't go to Starbucks, but um, <laughs> stop, stop by and get uh, a couple of assorted donuts. Okay. And walk up and say, hey, I'm your neighbor. Here, have some donuts. Got a cup of coffee? 
Okay. Be a human being. Right, right, right. And, and again, the thing about what we do, it's like a three-legged stool. You've right. got to convince the seller to sell. You got to convince the seller to sell to you. And then you got to convince the seller to take your offer. Three-legged stool. Well, when you're dealing with a realtor, you know the seller wants to sell and the realtor will convince them to take your offer. So now right. you just got to come up with the right offer. So, that, so that's why working through realtors is a little bit easier because you already knocked down two of the of the legs of the stool. Right. You go and direct a seller you gotta, you gotta knock down all three. You gotta get them to trust you, get them to sell to you, and then accept your offer. Right. Okay. But, you know, if if this person's 15 minutes from you and you really in your heart wanna help them, go buy donuts and break down that barrier. Okay. And just say, hey, listen, let's get, you know, here's some donuts and I'd love to talk to you about your situation. You got a cup of coffee. Yeah, now I got a, I got a hold of one guy. Um, he has a house in Tom's River. It's vacant. And I'm telling him, I'm like, you know, it's a vacant house. I can get you a good deal on it, cash payment. We don't have to worry about repairs as is. And he goes, why would I sell my property? I'm like, because it's vacant. He goes, so I don't need the money. Yeah. I'm like, okay, then that's good for you. Lucky you. Well, yeah, there's, there's no motivation there. Yeah. Now, somebody drives by his house at two o'clock in the morning, throws rocks through the windows. Might be some motivation there. I'm not saying go out and throw rocks through somebody's house, <laughs> but I'm just saying that that's the difference between a vacant house that's not motivated and one that's getting vandalized all the time. That seller mm -hmm. is going to be like, I want to sell this. Rock throwing for a rock thrower for hire. <laughs> <laughs> Dot com. <laughs> But that, that's what I'm just trying to point about the motivation. Oh, by the way, when it comes to foreclosures, another trick, yeah. if you can't get a hold of people, knock on the doors of either the house on either side. Yeah. The neighbors yeah. always know the name. Your, your neighbors always know your business. Okay. And by the way, if you, if you find a house that's a zombie, in other words, it's in foreclosure, but the people have bolted, take a uh, for sale sign, a bandit sign. And put it in the front lawn. Trust me, the seller Take will the for sale sign and put it at the end of the lawn. The seller will call you. <laughs> they mean the owner will call you. <laughs> the owner will call you. Yep. Really? Trust me, the seller <laughs> will. <laughs> you put a for sale sign in, in their lawn. Trust me, with your, seller will call you. <laughs> with there your was number a, on it. There was maybe, a number on it. Maybe not happy, but at least you now are talking to. <laughs> Yep, there was a house in Tom's River where the old guy fell off the roof and passed away. Hmm. And then the wife became very sick and she was moving out. So the house went into foreclosure. But nobody wanted to sell that house. Well, because the guy died on the roof? I don't know. I mean, every time I called the relatives because, you know, the lady had dementia, so I couldn't call her. I would call the relatives and they'd go like, we don't want to sell right now. We're very worried about our mother. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, I can help you. You know, I can I can help with whatever I understand where you're coming from. I have a son who's sick, so I get that. But with, don't you think a little liquid cash would help you? And she, they go, no, everything's covered. When it comes to dealing with realtors, when it comes to dealing with direct-to-sellers, think about what everybody else is doing and then don't yeah. do, that. do something yeah. different. Be different. The people that are different are the ones that stand out. The people that, you know, just send out a thousand postcards a week, the people that make, you know, 50, you know, three hours of phone calls every day, the people that, you know, um, the people that are out there that are doing the same thing everybody else is doing, they're doing the same thing everybody else is doing. So try to stand out, try to do something different. So what would you do? Get six donuts and walk up and knock on a guy's door. Throw a tailgate yeah. party and throw a tailgate party on the block. No, you don't have to do no. that. <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> but here's here's one thing I will tell you. Uh, run down houses breed other houses that are run down. What? So in other words, when you go to this neighborhood, yeah, look for other signs of distress on that. There's no street. other houses that are distressed. It's a very high end neighborhood. Okay, well that's a pretty house. But what I'm saying is foreclosures breed foreclosures. Okay. Rundown houses breed rundown other houses. 
Okay, so you're basically it's, saying your neighbor and you would be in the same boat, kind of. So in, so in other words, when you go over there, walk the neighborhood. You'd be yeah. surprised at how friendly people are. Now, okay. you want you want a trick? If you're going to go knocking on doors, you want a trick? Yeah. Get a clipboard. Get a tape measure. And go down to Home Depot or Lowe's and get one of those yellow vests that you see the guys that, on the, that are working on the side of the roads. Yeah. And put that on. So when you walk up to the door, you're carrying a clipboard. You got a tape measure on your hip and you're wearing one of those uh, reflector vests. Do you look you like you're a real estate person? Nope. And they think I'm like from the government? Or you could just be from the city checking water. You could be looking at a roof, whatever. But you disarm okay. people. And then you knock on the door and you say, hey, listen, I've been trying to get a hold of you. I saw that the bank has started the foreclosure process and I thought maybe, you know, you'd be interested in talking about it. You got a cup of coffee? Okay. And when we can talk about how bad these people are at the bank. By the way, have, has the bank reached out to help you and your family at all? Okay. No. Well, yeah, I know. I hear that all the time. We, we can sit down. And I can tell you how you can fight back against the bank. Right, right. See how I'm positioning that? Yeah. You don't look like the average real estate wholesaler. You don't sound like the real estate wholesaler. And you're starting to throw rocks at the enemy. I'll, I'll start the rocktower.com site. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're standing next to the to the person in foreclosure and you're, you're going to stand there with him and throw rocks at the bank because the bank's bad. Yep. They're not bad because they, they're not paying their mortgage. But I mean, life happens. No, I but again, get it. what I'm what I'm saying is just be different. I get it. I mean, else. we had a travel agency that had to go through bankruptcy, so I completely get that. Yeah, just be what I'm saying is in your marketing, just be different than everybody else. Okay. Got it. I will think of ways because right now when I go, I'm like, you know, dressed up. So I'll give you an example. We went to look at some uh, laundromats. I told you we were looking to buy a laundromat, and I went to look at one. And I was like a fish out of water. Yeah. I was a fish out of water. I had my bag. I had my sunglasses. I had proper clothes on. I had my heel shoes a little bit. Not even heel heels, short heels. And I walked in there. It was in Trenton, which is like a really, really bad area. Not bad, but you know, it's it's a low middle class area. And I was like a fish out of water. And the guy looks at me and he says, are you looking to buy this place? You won't be able to run it. Yeah. Good. And, you know, there's there's a lot to that. I mean, you know, when you're, when you're going to talk to people, you got to you gotta dress on their level. Yeah, I think yeah, you guys ever, you get, ever get on... It would be this bad. I've never been to a laundromat, in all honesty. Well, if you're going to own one. My husband's been, but not me. And by the way, if you ever want to, if you ever find a uh, coin operated laundry that wants to sell and you're not ready for it, call me immediately. Even in New Jersey? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll buy, I'll buy a laundry in New Jersey. Okay. Sounds good. I'll do I don't, that. I don't have to evict anybody from the laundromat. No. <laughs> <laughs> and people, but, people always say to me, you, what you, you're saying now about dressing appropriately because that was like I was totally like a fish out of water. I was like, you got a hoodie? No, I don't own a hoodie. <laughs> if, if you get on TikTok, there's that uh, Asian fella, and he's kind of like Pace Morby, just Asian, um, or or Jamil, just Asian. And um, he actually, I've seen him do videos like, yeah, when I first got into this, I used to show up in my suit and tie, and he wouldn't wasn't buying anything. Then he decided to show up in jeans and a t-shirt and a hoodie. And all of a sudden he started getting deals. Oh, you got, you got, you got to, it's called mirroring. Okay. The people will identify with you if they can, if, 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 if you act, look and behave like I, they do. Okay. So that goes for like, you know, when you're going for a job interview, you know, you've got to mirror the interviewer's I wouldn't say habits, but mannerisms, kind of. All right. I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but I watched this on 2020. They took a professional model and they frumped her up. 
They did the makeup so she looked frumpy. They didn't, you know, they made up her hair so it looked frumpy. They put her in these frumpy clothes and she went in with this resume and the person, and they, they had a male interviewer and they had a female interviewer, two different companies, and they filmed the whole thing and the girl didn't get the job. Same yeah. mom, same girl, same woman, all dolled up like a supermodel with the nice clothes and the hair and the makeup and everything. She went in with the exact same resume both male and female hired her. Yeah. These two people, when they when she went in there all frumped out, both okay. turned her down. So, so yeah. how you appear it's affects how people react with you. Yeah. That it's a big part of it. It's just how human brains work. It is, it is. And it's sad though, but it's very true. But so when you're walking in to buy a uh, coin-operated laundry, if you're walking in all dolled up, talking to the seller, yeah. you're like, oh, wow, this is not. And my problem. husband goes, he goes, don't wear those. I'm like, why? I mean, we're going out after that. He goes, you don't get it. Fine. Just do what you want. You learn. And you did. <laughs> and I did. And he went in like wearing, before me, wearing jeans and, you know, like sneakers that were like scuffed up a little bit. And he was fine. Like they talked to him really nicely. Yeah. <laughs> and they Joint talked to Joint venture him. partner. Hello. <laughs> and the guy gave him so much information. And then I go and he looks at me and he says, you come to buy this, you're not going to be able to run it. And the guy was being real because he knows his customers. Yeah, I guess so. I was talking, I'm I'm trying to buy a uh, laundromat, a uh, coin by laundry in uh, north of Orlando. And the guy actually stopped his uh, Wi-Fi and he actually had a uh, an easy chair where people could, you know, sit in the easy chair while they were doing their laundry. Yeah. He's open 24-7. So, at, you know, 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the morning, a homeless guy would come in there and be on the internet on a cell phone all night long. Oh, wow. I'm like, I don't know what's more distressing, the fact that the guy is homeless or that the homeless guy has cell phone service. <laughs> <laughs> With internet. With internet, don't forget that. So the guy would come in and sleep in this guy's easy chair in the, in the laundromat, which is open 24 seven and use the internet all night long. And there's a homeless guy in America. Wow. That's the kind of person you're talking about when you're talking about coin operated laundry. So yeah, you walk in all dolled up like that. The guy's looking at you like, and you're not going to run this place. Yeah, that's what he said. He's not for you. Um, but again, what we're talking <laughs> about is been, and he goes, he can run it. He goes. Yeah. But it's the same thing when you're going door knocking or you'll go and walk in neighborhoods. You don't want to look like a real estate investor. You don't want to look like a banker. And you sure don't want to look like somebody from the, from the government. Right. You look like somebody that's, you know, a meter reader. It totally disarms them. Okay. Got it. And also, you know, it works when you're knocking on doors on both sides. Right, right, right. And again, that's another strategy a lot of people don't teach that, you know, works great because your neighbors know your business. Yeah. They know who comes to your house. They know who goes from your house. You know, the whole thing. Yeah. Even in the super nice neighborhoods. More so, oh, yeah, more so in the super nice neighborhoods. Absolutely, I I totally understand that. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. So good. I'm glad you had. Uh, I'm well. Hopefully the MRI worked out well, but uh, hopefully Thank you. whatever yeah. slowed you down is not going to slow you down anymore, and you can get back at it. No, get back to it and really get the VAs in place because I don't want to call the owners. You know, it's very discouraging, very, very discouraging. It is. It is. And you're leaving 50 messages. Well, the only thing I would add to that is um, leave a message and then send them a text message. And there's a text message. Everybody yeah. gets text messages now. Yeah, I'll start doing that one. So, anyway, have a great week. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey there, Alexis. Hey, 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 what's up, my brother? What's up, what's up? What's up, what's up, man? Let me turn on my camera. Hold on, hold on. All right. Are you driving? Yeah. You're always driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. What happened, with, what happened with our realtor friend? Um, Couldn't get a hold of her. 
couldn't get a hold of her. But um, I feel like not all hope is lost on that one. She seems like a very, very nice person, at least, over the phone. So um, not, not all hope is gone, I believe. But I did have a question, um, Mike. So is there ever a time on sub two deals where we actually do offer the full asking price that the seller is asking for? Yeah, if the terms are beneficial. Um, did you listen to were you were you on when I was talking about the um the sub two deal up in Jacksonville that I'm thinking about turning into a pad split? Um, I, yeah, 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 I was, I, I don't know if I came in a little late, but I know you, you guys were, were talking about it. But bottom line is the, this is seller financing. It's not a subject to it's actual seller financing, but they're often 3.75% for 30 years with no balloon. Wow. Yeah. Now, um, you know, when there's a balloon, obviously that's where we got to get a discount, but you know, a 30 year 3.75. Yeah. That one, I'll, I'll pay full price on that house. Yeah, 30 years, I mean, you'd be able to pay that off. No balloon. And you're not going to see a 3.75% interest rate against in our lifetime. Yeah, absolutely not. So, um, I... so, so here, here's the rule. Their price, my terms. Their terms, my price. So in other words, they're giving me great financing terms here. I can pay full price for the house. And this house has been rehabbed. But... If they want all cash, that's their terms. Now they got to meet my price. Mm -hmm. That's the rule. Okay. It's like a seesaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because um, actually, I think I brought up uh, earlier in the morning when I talked to you, I got sent three properties that are being sold seller financing, but the terms don't look too great. Um, they want close to 20% down and 6% interest rate. Yeah, that's but, not, so So in that situation, then the price has got to come down. Okay. So in other words, they're not giving great terms. So it's like a if they're giving great terms, higher price. B bad terms, lower price. Middle terms, middle price. Got it, got it. Is, there, is it possible for me to negotiate? Because I've actually done one where I've negotiated um, in the past for seller financing where we were with this other sub two guy that I, that I know we did, we raised up the purchase price, but we asked for a lower interest rate and a lower down payment. Yeah. Do you, do you ever do stuff yeah. like that? Yeah. That's the thing about creative financing. Owner financing is you get to create the rules. Okay. But again, just think of it as a seesaw. Ter terms, price. Price, terms. Really good terms, really good price. Really bad terms. In other words, the more cash I got to bring to close, the less the, the less I can pay for the house. Okay. You want full okay. price? You know, 10% down and a 3% mortgage. Boom, full price. And, and no balloon. In the balloon. Yeah, that's a and that's I mean, a nice deal. Pace Morby says balloons are for clowns. I'm not I'm not that conservative. I'm I I'll I, I don't mind doing balloons, but I don't want to do a balloon. I can do a balloon. Minimum balloon I would do is seven years. And I know that this market is going to drop for another three and a half years. It'll level out and then start climbing back up. So seven years from now, the market will have bottomed out and we'll start climbing back up and we'll start getting appreciation again. Okay. But if you get a yes. if you get a shorter balloon than that, you could get stuck with a house that you've got seller finance that you can't get out of because you're underwater. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's that's something that I want to make sure I always I don't I don't want to negotiate myself into something I can't really do, especially yeah. since I don't really know how to underwrite right now. Yeah, I don't want to. I rather under promise and over deliver. Yep. Then to, you know, over promise and then like I'm not even um, coming in close to what I had promised. So I just wanted to kind of understand on that property, the one with where the realtor is the agent. Yeah. I mean, where the realtor is the seller. 
um because you mentioned that we gotta come we you drop the price a little bit because that's how much we need to go into the deal yeah um but i'm not really sure i understood exactly what you meant by that um because you had dropped the price i think like 80k from from arv or from asking well yeah because she wasn't giving us any information remember i said how much cash do you does she need at closing she didn't have a number. She didn't have a number. Yeah. So one thing I've always learned is you can always negotiate up. You can't negotiate. Well, you can negotiate down, but it's really, really hard. Okay. So, you so know, do start- you think if, if, she's, if she's open to, if she were to ask for more on the asking price, is that something that we'd be able to do? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I have that. Yeah. have that clear because i want to give her that option that if she wants to negotiate later on you know that we can always do it yeah and the thing about it is is just don't email the offers before you call call get her on the phone then hit the email i appreciate that mike man i, I I'm, I'm gonna say it too i appreciate constructive criticism <laughs> all day long even if it hurts at first i mean it might hurt at the like a shot you know like when you go to the doctor you get a shot yeah. It just hurts at first, but you know, um, I like it, you know, I like to, to get better. So, so I appreciate that. I know I had another question, but I'm just trying to come to remember. Um, uh, oh yes. Um, so do you ever consider, cause I know you were talking about prop wire right now. Yeah. And skip tracing people for 10 cents. Yep. Um, Because I have two properties that are, are listed on MLS. They got, they look like they got, they just bought them like a year ago. They'd be great sub two deals because the sellers can't sell them for that asking price. Um, and, and I want to be able to, um, if I can skip trace them, do, would you ever recommend mailing them like a postcard or a, you know a letter or something, letting them know that you're interested in their home? Let me let me give you a tip here. I I can tell you, most mailers and most postcards have about a one to two percent response rate. So for that means for every hundred postcards or or traditional mailers that you send, you're going to get one or two responses. That's why it's cost prohibitive now. Now, I've got something I learned from Ron Legrand 15 years ago that is the coolest thing ever. Have you ever heard of the yellow letter? Um, It sounds familiar. I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. You take a legal pad like this and you write on it. Hi, my name's Mike Grady. You put your name, not mine. Hi, my name's Mike Grady. I'd like to buy your house at, put in the address. Please call me at, put in your phone number, sign it, and then put PS, please call. Put that in to an envelope. Most people send regular white envelopes. I send green envelopes. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the other things I do is like a first envelope, I'll send one of these because it'll stand out. But like anything after that, I'll send an envelope that's the size of a birthday card. I'll send an envelope the size of something that looks like, you know, something you get invited to. But what you do is you handwrite the return address, handwrite the address, and put a live stamp on it. Because it doesn't look like commercial mail. And that's that's actually what I was going to ask you is, because that, that was my plan, actually, to to write up, not on the yellow paper, but now that you mentioned it, I'm going to buy one. I was just going to write on like a regular notebook paper and just handwrite it myself. That works, too. That way. This is the famous yellow letter, uh, a spiral bo- notebook where you rip them out. What it is, is it doesn't look professional. It looks like you just want to talk. 
I have had people call me up and they're like, I looked at this edge on it. You actually wrote this. Like, yeah, I sit there and watch Yankee baseball games, writing out letters. <laughs> you, you know, follow Houston or the Rangers or whoever. <laughs> um, I don't really watch baseball, but um, yeah, but I know, but I know baseball. I know baseball. Um, yeah. Whatever, whatever, really like- whatever you do in your spare time. I don't know if you're watching TV or whatever. You know, just when you're watching TV, just sitting there writing letters. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I wanted to get your opinion on that. So that's it. So if you do it, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it because some, like I've told you before, and like you said. Realtors are liars. Um, <laughs> they say that the seller is not interested, and I know that the seller is probably not even aware of, of what we're trying to do here. Yeah, and the thing about, especially when it comes to anything other than get the listing, show up at closing, and collect a check, if the realtor doesn't know, they're going to say no just because they don't know. And they're going to tell you that they that they gave your offer to the to the buyer or the seller. They probably didn't. And if they did, they didn't explain it right. And that's why when it comes to the subject two deals, the first question we ask them is, did you take the creative financing course at the association? When they say no, your whole goal is to get the seller on the phone. With the realtor, so so that you can present the sub two deal and explain how it's a benefit to them. Okay. Yeah. And again, the only reason I know this stuff is because I've just made a thousand more mistakes than you have. That's, that's good, man. I appreciate that. Um, I, was, I don't know if it was you that was talking about that last time where I heard it on a podcast or something, you know, but taking it. Oh, no, it was it was Pays that was talking about it last week on, on Wholesale Hotline for us to take advantage of those mistakes that you guys have made in front of us. You're right. And uh, learn from them. So, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll be honest with you. When I met Jamil last December, I mean, I've never, I, I, I spoke to him once, sorry. But um, when I heard him talk about, I mean, I, I was feeling bad for myself because back in 2008 and nine, I lost three and a half million dollars in real estate. Then I heard Jamil say he lost 50 million. I didn't feel so bad. <laughs> I still felt bad, trust me. But oh, 50 yeah. is a long way from three and a half. Yeah, yeah. Oh man! And he talks. He talks about the emotion of going through that, and I know how that feels. And that's what I was trying to tell Farah: is until you've been through that process yourself personally, you can't even understand how how it just drives you absolutely nuts, knowing that you're losing a business and there's nothing you can do about it. I try to put myself in in those shoes so you know the people that lost. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're one of them. I, actually, I didn't know that you were one of them. But um, I try to put myself in those shoes and I, like my, my, I think my mind tries to stop me from thinking so far out to stop myself from, to stop me from hurting myself. Cause I know that that sounds painful, man. That sounds, that sounds horrible. But so, the thing, but the I'm thing, glad that you're back. The thing about it is, is keep in mind that we didn't have YouTube back then. I mean, we had it, but it was in its infancy. We didn't have social media. We didn't have Facebook. We didn't have groups. I didn't have people I could reach out to that could help me help bail me out. Yep. We're living in a whole new world now. If I got a problem, I'm going to reach out to everybody I know and somebody will have a solution. True. True, true. I know that if I... If I can't figure something out on an offer, I know I could probably call you up and you'd be like, oh, yeah, man, it's just do yeah. this. That's the beauty. You're right. You're right. And it, you, you hear me say it all the time. Business is a team sport. Oh, yeah. CEOs of major corporations, Ford, Chrysler, Chevy, what the big banks, the CEOs do not get paid for what they know. They get paid for who they know. So when their when their business has a problem, they call who's ever in their Rolodex that can fix it. Whether that's a congressman, a senator, some other billionaire, the head of a bank, whatever. It's the people they know. That's what they get paid for. Yeah, man, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, Mike, I appreciate 
appreciate your help a lot. Um, like I said, like I told you in the morning, I didn't do a lot of uh, direct to seller, but I'm getting more into it. Um, just using true people search is not. Sometimes it doesn't go well with the right phone numbers or whatever. But true um, people I'm searches, getting a little bit better. True people search is accurate about fifty percent, maybe fifty five percent of the time. Yeah, I've noticed it. I've noticed that. But, uh, but I'm going to be doing a lot more. Trout prop wire. It's free and it's ten cents for for to cost you ten cents to do a skip trace. Is uh, I was I was actually trying it out right now when you guys were talking about it. Um, do you feel like it's pretty accurate? It, it, it seems pretty accurate on the estimation of mortgages and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't have anything to cross-reference it with, you know, right now. But, you know, as long as it gives me a ballpark. Okay. Um, what's it called? I'm, I'm trying to get into the, the understanding how to underwrite sub-two deals. Um, the reason why is because I've had some agents... And sometimes I don't even know if it's worth pursuing the properties or not, but some agents are like, well, just send me what you've got, your offer, because um, I don't have the most recent bank, st bank statement or whatever, but just send me your offer. Um, so I kind of want to get good at like estimating, like underwriting the deal, so that way I can maybe get into talking with the sellers about the possibility of us doing a sub-two deal. And again, you got to get away from that, man. When you send them your offer, they're prejudging you. When it comes to these creative deals, if they've never done a sub two deal, if they haven't taken that course, which means they don't know what they're talking about, you, you the next thing is, let's get on the phone with the seller. I will explain the offer to you and the seller at the exact same time. And by the okay. way, the seller knows how much they pay every month. Yeah. Everybody who has a mortgage knows how much they pay every month. They write the check, same check every month on the same day. Yeah, and true, they, true. And they have their mortgage statement, so they know what the balance is and they know what the what the um rate is. It's on the statement. So that realtor saying, just send me what you got, that's the realtor just trying to prejudge you. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. All righty, Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get into more of the direct to sellers. So that way I'm, I'm direct to the source. Um, I feel like I'm pretty good at talking to sellers yeah. from the very few experiences I've had. Yeah. Um, so, so I'll go, I'll go that route, even though Jamil doesn't like it. I mean, I, I like it. You know, I like the, I like the other avenue, especially on creative sites. So, yeah. So I'll be getting more into that. And keep in mind, you're saving yourself a whole bunch of money on the realtor commissions. Yeah. same thing with the seller tell the seller hey listen you know i mean obviously not if you're doing a listed property but uh you know direct to seller that's a big selling point is you know when you deal with me you don't have to deal with you don't have to deal with uh paying realtor commissions you're going to say seven percent seven percent of a hundred thousand dollars house is seven grand two hundred thousand dollars house is 14 that's starting to get into real money when you get into three three hundred three hundred thousand dollar house yeah. Here, just keep put that right in your old pocket. But again, as always, you know, man, you can always call me or text me if you got any questions whatsoever. Okay. All righty, Mike. I'll do that. I'll do that. Um, I'll keep you posted. I'm gonna keep uh, this property on the loop. Um, because it is gonna sit for a while, I'm pretty sure. So so we'll see what happens. Whatever happened to that expired listing guy? Um, I haven't been able to get a hold of him again. And actually, I haven't even checked if the property went up on the market after all or not. Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah, there's no such thing as a paused listing. <laughs> so when that realtor's like, oh, yeah, you know, we just paused it. Like, no, no, send me a copy of your listing agreement. Oh, man. I can't just imagine, man, what the realtor is is going to say whenever I ask for the listing agreement. Well, he's, you're calling his bluff. You know, you, you know, you called it because it was listed as an expired listing, and then you called, and all of a sudden, magically, it was unpaused. 
I mean, I, I mean, I guess I could give him a little bit of grace, you know, if the if the sellers are the ones that told him to call me. Yeah. But if I was you, because you know you've got the seller's number, just just treat keep trying to get a hold of the seller. Now, if the old man is sick and in the hospital, you're gonna definitely want to talk to the wife. Yeah. But you know, just say, hey, listen, that's fine. You know, you want to have your realtor, but uh, we'll I'll talk directly with you, and he can be on the phone. Yeah, See what true. what you're doing is you you know you can't do it in reverse. You already got the seller. You've already got a relationship with him. Now the real he just is scared so he wants to have his real estate professional on the phone well that's fine the real estate professional could be on the phone but this is a transaction between you and i you know you and you and the seller okay and just so so you're aware mike um like i told you the story but the that the agent told me then that means our offer would probably have to change because like i said the it seems like the wife is trying to move down to tyler texas yeah. where the the husband is hospitalized at. Yeah. So our offer might have to change it. But I mean, either way, I'm pretty sure we can work something out because it's a nice property. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good, Mike. Sounds good. Appreciate your help. All right, man. Talk to you tomorrow. All righty. Thank you. Hey, Lex Lindsay. What's going on? Oh, well, it's Monday night, having a good time talking about real estate. Yes, yes, yes. How can um, I help you? Because I feel like there's a billion questions that I could ask. I'm um, an astro student, so I don't really know a whole lot about sub two. Like I have access to the course. I just haven't gone through it. But I think my biggest question, I, I'm still working on trying to get that first deal. Um, and just curious, like, I don't know if it's just the got to keep putting out offers thing, but I've been at this for seven months and not not getting anywhere, it feels like. Okay. Ah, getting first somewhere. things first, do you have a copy of my time box? No. Well, put your, uh, obviously I've got your email, but put your email in the chat and I'll send it to you after we get off. What this will do is it'll organize your day Here's your time box. I and I just didn't fill my out as I went today. But um up here it's got seller calls, buyer calls, and number of offers you got out. And this is how you hold yourself accountable. But the the key thing is is how many offers did you go out get out last week? I sent out oh my gosh. I think 10 to 12. Good. That's not nothing. Yeah. 15. <laughs> okay. 15 is a good number. It should be 25, but 15 is a good number. Okay. Yeah. Um, what markets are you going after? Um, DFW and Houston. So I'm actually, uh, do you know who Michelle Garabito is? I do not. Okay. She's an Astro student and okay. I'm on her team. Uh, and she just kind of expanded out here to Texas. So okay. we've been working. I've been working Dallas for the past seven months and then um, may start working Houston. Okay. And um, are you using Astro Blaster? Yeah. Okay. How's that working out for you? Um, It's been solid. Uh, okay. I've been, so I have a full-time job and so I'm only able to do like four hours a day on on this and I've been wanting to like get on the phones because I'm like I get a better response rate that way but calling at five o'clock not very many agents <laughs> pick up the phone I don't know okay so the same thing I was telling Farah what phone system are you using uh it's Twilio I guess through Astro Blaster okay you can send text messages so call leave a message and then send a text Hey, um, and I was doing it doing it today when I when I was going down through and, and calling the uh, seller financing leads. Hey, it's uh, hey Jeff, it's Mike Grady. I'm interested in talking to you about buying your property at. I put the address, text or call me back, boom, mm -hmm. and send it out. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you know how they say talk about double dialing. Yeah, this is dialing and then texting. 
Because in today's world, everybody communicates via text. Right. So if you're not doing that, that's a great way to get people to respond to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely yeah. start hitting with that. <laughs> so um, what, all right, so you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. What um, type of properties are you going after? Um, distressed, primarily off market, but I'll put offers in on on market. It's just like trying to get offers out, um, but primarily trying to get off market stuff, distressed houses. All right. So when you're calling sellers, what do you say? Uh, well, I'm going through agents. So I'm doing agent outreach. When, uh, yeah. When you call an agent, what do you say? Uh, lately, I've been calling people who have just recently sold a distressed house. And so I'm like, hey, I just saw that house that you sold at 123 Main Street. Um, congratulations, by the way. Uh, I was just giving you a call to see if you had anything else that was just like it. I'm looking to buy in the area. Okay. Do you follow Nate Harris at all on Facebook? Yes, I do. <laughs> Um, I actually interviewed him and did a great interview with him. Um, and he spends with a seller who says, yes, they have a listing. He spends about three and a half minutes with, and when I mean sellers, I'm talking about realtors. When, he, when they actually have a listing, he spends about three and a half minutes. When they say no, he spends 30 seconds. Oh. Hey, it's, uh, it's Mike Grady. Um, I saw that property, you know, that you just sold over on whatever street. Awesome. By the way, do you have anything that's, uh, coming that, you know, any listings that are coming up or did you have active that need work or are in original condition? If they say yes, continue talking. If they say no, done. Mm. And I don't know if you watch Nate, he just hangs up on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did see him in like the virtual <laughs> office hours. I was just wondering, because like Jamil preaches about, you know, like building the agent relationship. If they say no, it's like, you know, we'll follow up with like, do you work with investors? Um, right. But I see where Nate is just like, no, I'm just hammering the phones. I don't want to spend time with people who don't have anything <laughs> for me. Yeah, and you, I mean, I think what it comes down to is that's Jamil's style. And, you know, I've got my style, Nate's got his style, you got to, you'll figure out your style. Mm -hmm. But I think um, just changing your initial conversation that, you know, is, you know, identify who you are. I saw this other property, you did a great job on it. Do you have, instead of going to have anything similar, because now that person's thinking about that deal, mm. change your language to say, do you have anything in original condition or needs work? Mm. Because that's more broad as opposed to getting them to think about that particular property. Mm -hmm. They're thinking, oh, does she want it on that street? And does she want a three bedroom, one bath? And does she want it fixed up? Or does she want it, does she want it, you know, distressed? You know, it, so if you just say, you know, identify who we are, give them a compliment. And then do you have anything that's neat, original condition or needs to be fixed up? That's what I'm looking for. Okay. I think, I think that might get to the point a little bit faster. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Um, dang, I did have a question now. I forgot. All right, for next week, write them down. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody's like, I remember the first two, but I had five more. Yeah, dang it. And I'm always here. I'm going to be, I'm always going to be here. I love doing this. Sweet. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I've been, I was trying to get on the one last week and the one where you interviewed Nathan, but I just wasn't able to make it after work. So. Well, I, always do, a, I do a replay. Right? This one's going to need to be edited a little bit, but because we had an idiot on earlier. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, I appreciate your help. And yeah, if I have any questions, I'll definitely hit you up. Send me a text or, you know, uh, give me a call. Will do. Thanks. Have you got any buyers out there in Dallas? Um, uh, no, actually that was the question. There yes. we go. <laughs> so I have, I've been working with Michelle and her, like her whole system is like, I'm just getting leads. I think I'm just bird dogging and she's sending them, you know, she's running the numbers and stuff, but like, I'm starting to get the feeling that maybe I should be building up my own buyers list to get an idea of like, how are these guys running their numbers? Cause like I've talked to a couple of like Pooja and Hanoi and I mean, they all run their numbers the same way. It's like 70, 75% minus repairs, but I'm like, are there other investors out there that are maybe not buying at that or using that same formula? Okay. That formula 70 or 75% minus repairs. Yeah. Um, that's the way I used to do it. 
Have you ever rehabbed a house in your life? Are you a licensed contractor? Here's the thing. Have you ever done a project and you had to go to Lowe's four or five times? No? No. Nope. Well, for all the guys on this call, we know exactly what I'm talking about. Whenever we have a project, because we don't do it all the time, you end up going back and forth to Lowe's three or four times. The, the problem with, with that is when you're dealing with somebody who is a full-time rehabber, they can do it at half the time at half the cost. So if you're using the formula of 70% minus what you think the repairs are, your repairs can be way off. Mm -hmm. So I stopped doing it that way. Full gut rehab. And I just talked about this earlier with a new, a new guy I just talked to this afternoon down in San Antonio. And he, I mean, he rehab stuff that his houses look awesome. Um, but he'll do a full gut rehab at 50 cents on a dollar. He'll do a lipstick at 60. Well, if I'm looking at a rehab in San Antonio, I know I got to get it 40% of ARV. So he'll buy it for me at 50. See how I don't even care what the rehab costs are because he does it full time. He's probably got crews that get in there. He's got uh, um, wholesale contracts with suppliers so he can buy it cheaper than I can buy it. So if you're using the formula, that means you got to know how to rehab. You got to know how to, you know, quote out and your rehabbers are, are probably not going to use your number. So you might be limiting what you're getting under contract because your rehab number that you come up with, you might look at that and go, oh, that's not a deal where somebody who does it professionally is like, oh, my margins are way tighter than that. Yeah, so I'd say instead of using that old model of 70 minus repairs, which is how I learned it from Ron Legrand. Now I'm just a straight percentage. Okay. And that's how Jamil teaches it too. It's just like have uh, like all a lot of the dispo people that I've run into here. That's how they say they run the they run their numbers seventy or seventy five percent minus repairs. And I'm like, well, I don't know how much it costs <laughs> to rehab a house. Exactly. Uh, yes. So just try to lock stuff up at fifty percent or less. Now, if it's a turnkey house, obviously it doesn't have to be that low. Right. You know. And if it's a if it, it's a lipstick remodel, you know, rule of thumb, you got to be below sixty percent. And what is lips? What's a lipstick remodel? I'm guessing it just needs paint, carpet, and granite countertops. And granite countertops. Okay, that's it. That's all they're changing. What about stuff? That, so uh, anything outside of that, it's like if you need to rehab the kitchen, or like update the kitchen, update the bathrooms and stuff. It, that's what you would consider a. That's a, that's a full gut because you got to, yeah, that's a tear out. It's the okay. same thing with the roof too. Roof is a major expenditure. Mm. So if it needs any of those like major repairs, it's probably. Lipstick is basically carpet, paint, and granite countertops. Okay. But anything more than that, just count it as a full gut and just go 40%. And then when, you know, you walk, you know, you call up a buyer and like, hey, listen, I got this $200,000 house where you'll take it at a hundred grand. Oh, by you know, it's a lipstick remodel. They're going to be like, hell yeah. Would you recommend like starting to build up a buyer's list? Because I've been going heavy on ACK, but at this point I'm like, ah, every man. day. And and it, it, I do the same thing that Nate does when you're like, you know, you call up these realtors that are representing this product property and they'll tell you they're investors. They're investors with a license. Mm -hmm. And that's when you switch right into buyer mode. You know, what are you looking for? Full gut rehabs, lipsticks, turnkey, you know, where you need to buy it at. Well, I don't know. Well, if the property costs a hundred grand and it's a full gut remodel, would you take it at 50 cents, you know, at 50,000? Well, yeah. Well, now you know what it's buy boxes. <laughs> but yeah, no, every, every, every phone call you make, if you come across the buyer, switch into buyer mode. Okay. And that's how you build a buyer's list. And the thing about trying to use Privy um, the way that Jabil teaches it, and you know, it's a great and effective way. But the problem is, is most rehabbers that are serious about this are using trusts and they're using LLCs that are owned by trusts that are owned by LLCs. These yeah. people do not want to be found. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> they do not want to be found. And I have gone. I mean, I've gone down that rabbit hole. I'm like, Jesus! I just spent two hours trying to find a guy, and I wasted two hours trying to find a guy. 
Yeah. I've decided that when I, you know, unless, unless I can, in, in Florida, we go to sunbiz.org, you know, if, if I find an LLC and I find a person's name and it's, it's got their home address, sure, that's something I'll go after. But if it's mm-hmm. an LLC owned by a trust owned by another LLC, forget it. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want to be found. And if you listen to Pace Morby, he, he, I just got a video from him last night. He's like, this is my corporate structure. I've got my trust up here that owns all my personal stuff. Then I got a holding company. Then I got like 50 different LLCs. Then I got this and that and the other thing. He doesn't want to be found. He brags about not wanting to be found. Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, you could go down a rabbit hole and waste two hours on that. Yeah. Don't do it. But when you're calling and you run across a guy like, yeah, you know, I rehab houses. But it's really hard to find stuff. Well, that's what we specialize in. What are you looking for? And then name, cell phone, email. All right. Yeah, I'm going to start making that one of my days. It's just like buyer outreach because I just feel like everybody's stuff is different. But that's what I'm saying. You don't need to have a day of buyer outreach. Just, that's when you're calling sellers, when, you, when you're calling agents. Now, here's another thing that I do. Um, especially for those ones that don't want to be found. One of the nice things about Privy is you can go in and look at the property. And if it's owned by some LLC that doesn't want to be found, go up and call the agent. Yeah. And um, the deal, the, 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 uh, the deal that I'm working, the uh, rehab, the full gut rehab that I'm working with Rich White on. Um, he brought it to me and I've been wholesaling it. What I did is again, I went up into Chicago and I looked at the zip code and I pulled all of the rehabs that have been done in the last year. Um, and of course, all of them are LLCs and nobody wants to be found. But I made a list of all the agents. And, you know, Privy doesn't give you the agent name. So what I do is I take and I put into Google, Chicago, realtor, realtor's name, uh, brokerage firm and realtor's name. And normally either uh, uh, realtor.com comes up or um, the Chicago Board of Realtors website comes up. Normally, um, realtor.com, they'll actually publish their mobile phone. Mm-hmm. So, I write, so I write down the mobile phone and I put that in a spreadsheet. Yeah. The other thing I did is because I didn't have a whole lot of realtors that represented. In other words, they sold the end product from the rehabber. Mm-hmm. So what I did is I looked at all the zip codes around the zip code that our, our property's in and pulled all the realtors that represented properties or sold properties for rehabbers in the zip codes around that zip code. And now I got a list of like, I think 35 realtors. And I got their emails um, from, from the real estate board. So now I got mm-hmm. their cell phone and their emails I sent them all a broadcast email with the, about our deal. And then on Monday, I called them all, which, of course, none of them got my email. They did, but they didn't, you know. Yeah. Um, and I called them like, you know, like, hey, would you be interested in this deal? And like, you know, 80% of them said yes, and 20% said no. And of the ones that said yes, you know, send me the information. Like, oh, yeah, well, I sent it to you last Friday. Did you read your email? <laughs> well, send it to me again. I'm probably landed in spam. So I sent it to them again. But now I've spoken to him. Yeah. And, you know, I've actually got uh, two realtors that actually brought multiple rehabbers to the property today. Mm. So that's a way that you you can't get through to the ones that have those LLCs that don't want to be found. But Mm -hmm. the realtors know who they are. And that's free advertising because the the buyer, their buyer is going to pay their realtor fee. You're not going to pay the realtor fee. Yeah. So that's the way I get around that LLC thing. Okay. And, it, it, you know, like I said, I got two realtors that brought four rehabbers to the property. Two of them didn't want it and two of them are looking at making offers. And this is a house that needs to be flipped. Oh yeah. This is a, the, yeah, this is a wholesale deal and it's a, it's a full gut rehab down to the, I mean, this property was built in 1890. So it's down to the stone. Dang. <laughs> Chicago's an old city. Downtown Chicago's old. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's 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 one way that I find buyers that don't want to be found. Just go to the realtors. And then, you know, over time, you know, when they sign that contract, that wholesale contract, they're not gonna, you know, they're gonna sign it with their name and their phone number because I gotta be able to talk to them. Mm -hmm. They go right in, right in the buyer's list. Okay. That's how you build it over time. Yeah. And and those okay. rehabbers are not doing one a year, they're doing you know one a month. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Cool. Hopefully that was the answer you were looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. really overall, it's like I should start trying to trying to get buyers because right now it's like I'm relying on dispos or other people. And um, I don't know, maybe it's just a matter of time. I just gotta keep hammering away at it. But I'm like, I feel like I'm beating myself my head against the wall trying to lock up a deal and getting told all the time that's too low, that's too low. Somebody else made an, a higher offer, and I'm like, what the yeah. Um, we all go through that. It's just part of the game. Yeah. You just got to have alligator skin. But groups like this where you can vent and Joe can tell you, he called me after I had to talk to that idiot realtor last Friday night. <laughs> he listened to me vent for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> What a way to close out the week, right? Oh, yeah, that's exactly what he said. He was he was he was my priest last Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to let you know I'm in there in the trenches. I'm getting told all the nasty stuff that you're getting told every day, too. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you I told you about the the I don't remember what city it was, but they're like the realtor says, We're offering seller financing. I said, All right, tell me what the terms are. Well, we want 50% down. And 10% interest. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's no. So, so you don't want to sell this house. <laughs> yeah, you, right. Exactly. You don't want to sell this house. But I didn't spend more than 30 seconds with that person. You're right. You hit it nail on the head. You went right to it. No motive. You read it exactly what I did. No motivation. Yeah. Cool. What else can I help you with? I think that's that's it right now. All right. <laughs> yeah. Keep what are they chopping wood, carrying water? <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the things I would suggest is you are in a super hot market. Maybe spend some time in a market that's not so Texas. Yeah, that was some another consideration I was making. Do you have any recommendations? I feel that's like everybody's in Florida and I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> Um, but, have, have you ever been to my website, gradybuyshouses.com? Mm -mm. oh. Joe, if you go there in the, I, I publish a website every day that's got, it's like just real estate news. And on the lower right-hand side, it's got all the markets that I track, the data that I track in all those markets. And um, are you familiar with the pad split exit? Mm -mm. All right. So when you go to my news website in the lower right hand side, it'll have all the market data. And the highlighted cities are cities that pad split is in. What pad split does is it takes a single family home and turns it into a multi a multifamily income stream. I will buy them all from you. So Wait, because I'm trying to like pull your website up and it just keeps taking me to this slash get an offer. Oh, hang on a second. Mm. It's Grady buys houses. Dot com forward slash real estate. Okay. Real estate news. Give me a second. Uh, there, I just, uh, I just put it in the chat. Ooh, thank click you. On, click on that. All right. And then scroll down all the way to the bottom on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Okay. And see all the ones that are highlighted? The bold ones? Yep. Yeah. Um, so you'll see Phoenix, Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa, Miami, Lakeland, Atlanta, uh, Indianapolis, Kansas City, Columbus, Nashville. Baltimore, Richmond, New Orleans. 
Yeah. All those are really, really good markets, and you don't hear a lot of gurus talking about them. And what is, you said you were talking about pads, but sorry, I was like trying to pull up your website while I was listening. Okay. Good. So let me, let me tell you about this. I don't know if you heard um, about the deal that I was working on this morning in Jacksonville. Price, uh, they want $289.9 for it. It's a four bedroom, two bath house. And that property I looked up um, will rent for about $2,400 to $2,500 a month. What pad split will do is because it's a uh, 2,500 square foot house, which means it's got a big living room or a big uh, dining room that's connected. What they'll do is they'll take those two rooms and convert them into bedrooms. Mm. And then what they do is they put doors on each bedroom that have like an electronic lock. So only the person that rents that room can get in there. Mm. And now you rent the rooms by the week. Wow. So, so now the perform so now I've got a six bedroom, two bath, and the performer takes that from uh twenty four hundred dollars a month to fifty uh forty five hundred dollars a month. I put a video in the chat up up high. So if you look, it says pace morby pad split. That's where I learned it from three weeks ago. So basically what it is, is now um, after pad split manages all the people, gets them all filled up, you know, gets the whole thing rocking and rolling, which, you know, takes about a month and a half, that property will probably cash flow about $900 a month. Man. And so the highlighted markets are the ones that you're looking that pad, at. Yeah, that property. pad split actually works in right now. It'll work in any city, but that's where pad split spends their money to go find tenants. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of somebody spending their money to put people in my property. Right. So do you have a buy box for it or? Click on any one of those markets. You'll see all, uh, either two buy oh. boxes or three. Got you. And I update them every single month. Okay. Now you see the number at the top, the median home value. Mm -hmm. Do yourself a favor when you're, when you're filtering out properties that, that you're going to call. Whatever market you're going after, stay below that median number. And the reason why is because 18 months ago, you could get a 3.5% mortgage. Today, people getting brand new mortgages are getting them at 7%. Mm -hmm. So if you could afford a $400,000 house 18 months ago at 3%, now you could afford a $200,000 house. Ooh. Because... Mortgage rates have doubled, which means they can afford half the house yeah. because mortgage rates have doubled, but people's incomes haven't doubled. So if you had a $3,000 a month budget for a mortgage, well, your budget is still $3,000, but your mortgage can only afford half of the house. Yeah. So all the buyers between 500,000 and 1.5 million have moved down into the lower, into that under $500,000 mark. Mm -hmm. So the, the best houses to go after where you're going to have the most amount of buyers are under the median. Okay. And that's why I say best offers are going to come under the median. Got gotcha. you. It's all about the numbers. Well, no, this is super helpful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a data nerd. But, you know, Texas, Dallas is just as hot as Florida, just like Phoenix and, and Vegas. So that's why I would pick, you know, Baltimore, Richmond, New Orleans. I mean, yeah. when was the last time you heard a guru talk about New Orleans? Man, never. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. I like competition, but I'd rather compete against 500 people as opposed to 10,000. Yeah, yeah. So just go after a secondary market. Another market I like, I like a lot is Memphis. Now, Memphis is not a pad split um, market, but Nashville is. Nashville. Yeah. But Memphis is, is a great market. It's not a market that a lot of people talk about, but it's great for flipping. And the, there, wow, median house is 150, Jesus. 
<laughs> See what I mean? You're used to working in the stratosphere with everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. I uh, definitely am going to poke around your site and get some some inspiration from here. <laughs> okay. Um, I will email you the uh, the uh, um time box that I use every week. I've just developed that. That works for me over time. A lot of people like it. I know Farrah likes it. Um, but then next week I'll ask you what your numbers are. Got you. We, and then ask me what my numbers are. Keep me accountable too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Nope. Sorry. There we go. All right, Joe, baby, you're up. Joe, you unmute, Joe, you unmute. How's that? There we go, better. Okay. Yeah, I'm working with uh, with another investor right now and he and I are both gators. And so we're going after uh, some gator deals and he's put together a, a little program and and uh, I'm getting, we're getting leads. Um, I've got one right now. Um, he's in a tough situation. He's got three four he's got actually four subject twos and they want um a non-refundable emd and that's what he's looking for some emd and i'm like that's a good that's a tough sell there you know because we're working with other you know the name of the game is other people's money yep and so it's other people's money it's their rules and so i haven't asked yet but i'm gonna find out really soon if they do that because this guy's an end buyer. He is the end buyer. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's looking for a non-refundable EMD. He better be a hundred percent sure it's going to close. Yeah. And so, I mean, it is because he's the end buyer. There you go. You know, so, yeah. but I've been on the phone with him over the weekend, all day today. <laughs> and that's what I've been doing pretty much the whole weekend. You know, we started, he did something, he ran something and, now he's he's uh we're getting leads in. I'm I'm setting up an email that we share. Nice. You know, and so um it's it's uh it's moving along fast. <laughs> that that whatever he did, it moves fast. You know, it's like I said last week, there's way more money than there are deals. Yeah. Yeah, and I know, and that's why I got into the gator thing. I think I can't remember. I think it was in the um how to make uh how to win friends and influence people. The guy, uh, they tell the story about the the gold rush, 1849, and the guy that um, that walked away, like millionaire from there, and this is 18 1849, 1850s, and walked away a millionaires because he was the one with the picks and the shovels. He was the one selling the shovels and the picks. Yep, and so that's that's where you put yourself in right now when you're a gator, you're the yep. one with the picks and the shovels. Yep. And so we're uh we picked up another um I picked up another uh um private money lender. And so we're we're you know we're gaining traction fast. It's it's moving so fast. Yeah. You know, the money's there. The money's there. Yeah. You know, it's gotta put the cool. you and Carol gotta get together and and because she's moving too. Yeah. Yes, that, yes, Joe. We definitely have to get together because I'm looking for private money lenders and I'm having a hard time trying to find them. Yeah, they're they're out there. You know, they're, you know, you, those are the ones you really got to look for. You know, because yeah. they're particular, very particular about what they what they uh, loan on. Yeah, uh, this week I was looking for one for um, four hundred thousand. I found two guys, and um, this is particular. And then sometimes they'll tell me, "Oh, I have four deals out there. I'm waiting for money to come in." But they want to hear your deals, and they'll string you along. And then after yeah. a while, well, it's the Nintel is not good. Just tell you that they have money out and they, they can't do your deal, but they want to hear about it. But they, they're out there. Just have to find the one, the right one to yeah. get it. So, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to help this guy fund a deal for 1.4 mil. And he actually got uh, funded for 800,000 of it. So we're still looking for the other six. But he was looking for like... Um, uh, uh, entry level like 200k each 
But now we're down to 20K. So if you have 20K to get in or 15K if you want to get in, because it's down to the last, what, 400,000. Okay. But it's so hard because the this deal is a 12-month deal. You know, gators don't want to go that 12. Yeah. So that's, so that's what I'm running to. The, we, I find that PMLs, but nobody will go the 12 months. Yeah, so, no, I don't know. Four months right now, I got a guy, <clears throat> he wants 1.4. And he's already got uh, three end buyers mm -hmm. who are willing to uh, put the money in. They're they're already going to buy the land. He's, this guy deals in land, so right. it's going to be like a, a two day, uh, um, a two day uh, double close. Yeah, you know. So yeah, and so I'm um, I'm looking for uh, someone who will fund that right now. Well, for two day double close, you probably will find it, and I probably can. We probably can talk and send you. I could probably send you lenders that refuse my twelve months, mm -hmm. and see if they'll they'll do it. <laughs> my work here is done. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'll write the number down, and we'll talk. And, and, and yeah, do that because yeah. it won't be for another. And, and it depends on the the thing is that we don't know how soon he's going to close on his end. So the A to B is still not right. Uh, so. It's still not under contract. He's already got it all set up, but it's not under contract yet. So it's going to be anywhere between 90, 30 to 90 days. Yeah, because some of these people I'm, I'm talking to, they have money, soft money out. It's not coming back for 30 days or 60 days. So those would be perfect if if your deal probably going to be out there between 60 and 90. They'll have their money in by, by then. So, yeah, we could uh, we could exchange some stuff and see what's happening. Because I do have two that just fell through because they just didn't want to do the 12 months. Even though we'll tell them that they'll, they'll get they start getting interest only at six months, but you won't get your full value until 12 months. They still didn't want to go at the 12 months for that kind of money. So and I'm I'm breaking it down to 15k. And I don't think I'm gonna get anybody 15k trying to go at the 12 months either. So who yeah, knows? Right. Yeah. Right, yeah. So we probably we probably probably don't get the last four hundred thousand of it because of the 12 month thing. So I don't know what they're gonna do. Maybe they're I could probably come up with some creative stuff so he can figure out how to get it. But it is a 12 months that is messing him up. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. So that's that's what I've been working on, Mike. You know, just getting those things uh funded. Yeah. Yeah. And I it sounds to me like Carol can help you out. Yeah, it's it's out there. We're just because we're gators, they don't want to do the extended time. That's what it is. Yeah, so you have to find somewhere else. And I'm not going to hard money lenders. They want PML. So it's yeah. sort of hard sometimes, yeah. But I did find a guy that um, I funded a EMD today at um, $10,000 for 60% of the dollar for 30 days. So Nice. nice. Yeah. So you're going to get 16000 back? No, I'm going to get um, 6000 back, I think. Well, yeah, you're 10 plus. Yeah. 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 yeah 16. Sorry. <laughs> I, yeah, 16, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I do that all day long. <laughs> but the guys that come back and they're like, I want 20 grand plus 30% of your deal. And I'm like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm hoping to get that back uh, August 17th. So, because I send it all the stuff today, got paperwork signed and everything. So, yeah. Okay. But that's what I'm doing. I see, yeah, that sounds like going. an awesome deal. I mean, six grand. I mean, you made what ten grand last week. Plus, you had a line on forty nine thousand. I mean, you're moving. Yeah, and I'm still trying to hold it on at forty nine thousand. Still trying to find somebody. Yeah. All right, now I yeah. gotta I gotta ask you again. Same thing I asked you last week. Where are you guys finding these people looking for money? <laughs> and the same same Facebook group that we go in. You go on the the wholesalers um, Facebook group. We're going to paste Facebook group. And all of those Facebook groups, you go in and find them. And, but you have to be very fast. Gotcha. You're looking in as soon as they put it in, people are always out there. But I don't answer them in the Facebook group. I just DM them right away. Yep, me I too. Say, I, I can help you. There's my number. Here's my stuff. And do I don't I don't put all the stuff in the Facebook. Say, I can help you. Call me. said, no. Or I I'm DM interested. them right. Yeah. And even if I look in and I see that they already have five people are ahead of me. I, I'll go, if it's 10 people ahead of me, I'll still DM. After 10, I just don't DM anymore. But if yeah. on the 10, I DM straight, and I always get a resp our resp our response that way. Yeah, Yeah, I friend them, and I DM them right away. Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't friend them yet. I DM. If they if they answer me back, then maybe I'll friend them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, 
That's what I do. And um, but just listening to you guys talking today about prop stream, I've never been in it. So prop wire. Um, prop uh, wire. Prop wire, yeah, prop wire. And I've I didn't know about it. it. I didn't know about it till last week when Farrah brought it up. Yeah. I'm going to go in it and see if I know how to operate in it. And if I have questions, then I'm going to ask you guys how you'll figure out the comps. So y'all figure out that. But I'm going to try to look at it and see if I can figure something out. I'm going to try to put maybe a, a city in it and just go from there and see what comes up. There's four okay. tabs at the top. One is uh, owner informa property information, owner information, and then comping. It's really super simple. Good. I'm interested in the comping part because I don't know how to do that. So I'm going to put some property in there and go to the company and see how that works. Exactly. And just, I, so I, and it also gives you an estimate, you know, how PropStream gives you an S, its own estimated value. Yeah. Yeah. So, prop so prop 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 yeah. I'd proper do it for free too. So yeah. For so free. that's going to be my assignment for this week. I'm going to try to get some time to go in there because I've been doing gator deals, deals but I realize the real wealth is into a buy and hold or owning. Owning, owning yeah. Only, yeah. And uh, we, and what I will, you know, if I can put this Jacksonville deal together, I'll call you on the phone and we'll talk about it more. Yes, please, because we we'll definitely need to go on that pad split thing if we can go that. Yeah. Absolutely, because you know, um, if you came in as an equity, you know, as the bridge right. and, the, and the build out, then you know, you get we could split that uh, that yep. nine fifty a month. Yep, that's what we're hoping. If the original people in here, whoever wants, so we can split out and get it faster. Exactly. And like I said, you know, I analyze that deal and I'm like, all right, so, all right. So, you know, it might work out. This guy, you know, might, he, he might flip it quick. That's cool. But how did he get that deal? He got that deal because he went into Zillow and searched <laughs> for owner financing. Right. And I'm going to try to do that too. Cause I didn't know we could do that. So yeah, I'm going to. Yeah. And it, yeah. it's another thing for, for Lex Lindsay is she might want to go into Zillow and search for people that where, it, where the listing says original condition or needs work. Oh, okay. So also the different search buttons are there. You can find stuff. Like it's the, it's like the last tab all the way over. It's like miscellaneous. Oh. You hit that okay. drop down and you go all the way to the bottom and it'll take keywords. Yeah. And you just, and you can always, uh, yeah. And you can always ask the realtor question because I called one of the realtors something. And I said, um, send me a CMA for whatever the property. And she sent me something like that. So, yeah. The yeah, problem with I'm, those CMAs is they're they're not as accurate as the way we do. It. Nope. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of things are missing too. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna spend my own time and go on um prop wire and see what I can come up with. Good. All right. Joe, Good I kind of ran over you there. What else you got? No, that was it. <laughs> that was all. Yeah, you got you got two for one with Joe and myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm yeah. gonna put together. I I got a script from somebody. And um, just to just put it out there and all the because I'm in a bunch of uh, wholesale Facebook groups. Right. Yeah. Just, just put it out there and, and, see, and what, see what happens. See what happens. Yeah. You know? What's your yeah, yeah. What, what's your script? Yeah. Send us a script, Jay. I, mean, uh, I don't have it uh, on here yet. <laughs> I just typed it up today. Are you working on it? Yeah. I'm still working on it, but I'll send it. I'll send it out. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'll send it to both of you. Yes, thank and, you. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm basically, she was saying like, "Hey, wholesalers, I know you're crushing it. I know you're making money. You sometimes need funding to double close or do more with, do more with it, or maybe you're not liquid for EMD." Exactly. Yeah. Just simple and, and easy, and put it in there. Throw it yeah. out. There, you know, mm -hmm. kind of DM me or email me or whatever. Yeah, that's yeah, and you, you put it in there every week because once it's gone, they don't normally go back. So if you keep putting in, somebody yeah. fresh will see it. Yeah, yeah, right. So yeah, that's the approach I'm going to try this week and see how I'll I'll have see how that works next week. Yeah, that's true. We have to try all different kinds of stuff to get the deals. Yeah, yeah. And we won't know unless we come to these Zoom calls. We hear what other people do and how it's successful, and we go. We're not necessarily competing with them because we're different markets or different things, different Facebook site. Yeah. Well, this is good. Yeah. I got my nugget. I got my nuggets at the end of the call. My God, I had to sit through two hours to get my nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Good Lord, have we seriously been doing this for two and a half hours? It seems like yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you talked to Farah for about an hour plus. <laughs> you guys got to stop me from doing that. <laughs> Joe, well, I'll make you... sure to put that in the uh, 
in the yeah. notes, uh, in the notes next week on the uh, the the first uh, chat that I put out there. You know, I'm I'm gonna put on there limit to two questions. Be mindful <laughs> of people's time. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, somebody... and what, I, what I'm gonna need to do is put a timer up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somebody have to go in there and say, uh, uh, "I have a question <laughs> yeah. somewhere." And I said, yeah. you know, raise your hand and and right. Yeah. That's what I said. Raise your hand. You know? Guys, I saw that. Guys, so I will whenever, be. Whenever I see Joe put raise her hand, I know it's time to so for me to ever ask a question so somebody can stop talking. Okay, I will I will be cognizant of that going forward. I'll make sure that I don't run at the mouth because I tend to do that. No, but you're the you're the moderator. You have to do that because you have to keep us going. But when the other people come in and take over for an hour and a half, that's not helping us sometimes. No, you're right. And that's that's not the mission here. Right, exactly. Right, okay. and All then right. after she fin after she finished, she left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Good enough. All right. Thank Thanks, you, guys. guys. Have a great week. Have you great too. Week. Bye, bye. Bye. -bye.